<laughs> hey everyone, <laughs> welcome back to Arcane Focus. Uh, I'm your DM, Mike. Join with me are my amazing players, Amber, Steve, no, and Temple. <laughs> hey guys, welcome to Magic and Mustad, our ongoing campaign. We're hitting 30, uh, session 37 right now. Uh, we're slowly making our way to the golden, golden episode because I think. 50 years is the golden anniversary, right? <laughs> oh, I just the golden thought, anniversary. Oh. Yeah. And 40 is the midlife crisis. Exactly. I thought 25 was the midlife crisis. Now it is now. <laughs> yeah, it is. Yeah, I was going to say. So 25 is the new midlife crisis. Did you hit your midlife, your quote unquote, like, quarter life crisis when you hit 25? I had the cap backward and the skateboard, and I was like, what's up, fellow kids? <laughs> oh, no. Hi, Steve that Buscemi. Midlife crisis. <laughs> hmm. Well, uh, a few announcements, as uh, we've been mentioning on this channel for a while now. Yeah, we do have uh, one-shots that we do every other month. This or this coming month in September, we're going to have two one-shots. Uh, one happening next week and one happening on the 12th. We've got uh, Within the Harvest House, which is coming out on the 12th. I'm oh, sorry, the 4th. And the 12th is Malaholics, which is going to be uh, when you get magic, D&D, and you mix it together with the 90s, which we're all from... <laughs> Not to date ourselves. Uh, speak for yourself. Oh, that's right. Listen here, you, you hooligans. That's where I'm from. <laughs> I'm from the 90s. You hooligans, listen here. And get off my lawn. What is it, 80s babies, 90s child? You gotta yeah. blast, blast the uh, Nirvana. Uh, get your, uh, your zip on, sh the pump up shoes. You know what I mean? Well, that shit I, I am forgot a 90s about. Child. I, was, I was glad I forgot. All, I was a 90s kid and I never did any of that. Slap those like, slap but, bracelets? But I didn't have those. those. Pogs. Oh, get the nope. pogs, have a pocket nope. of them? I had nope. pogs Pump and the slap bracelets. Pump up those kicks with the light up, with light up back. And then the way Amber described it is that also if you're a woman, you have that like really glossy uh, flavored like lipstick, the, the bomb. The cherry flavor. Because no, he no, was no. like, was about, he's like name something smuckers. for me. And yeah. I was just like, oh, there's that <laughs> meme where it's like, you know, the flavored clear lip gloss that everybody's like, oh, this is candy, but like it's supposed to be lip gloss, but they have like five different fucking kinds in their bag. It that was thing. all about the Dr. Pepper smuckers. <laughs> 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 all right, guys. Well, let's get started with today's episode. Let's do a quick recap of what happened last time. Uh, a soft pulsating light fills the cavern as Savannah is thrown deeper into the sea cave by this hulking demonic entity. Within moments, the party rushes to attack. Uh, with each blow and attack, the demon grabs and tosses both Savannah and Roly into the still-lit sigils around, along the ground. Axe swings, necrotic claws, a banishment spell, and more fill the room. However, with one final glint upon the demon's eye, the sigils Spin, spent, and Rolly's soul was taken from his very body. <clears throat> Filled with fury, both Vera, Savannah, and Roman finished the demon off. There, lying on the sea cavern floor, Rolly Barnwell's body lays dormant on the ground, colorless. The party takes the gem, uh, along with the body, to Igno the Wise, the domain chosen whom they just finished rescuing and is currently resting several sections deeper or further out within the cave. After an identify spell, an assessment of the situation, he discloses that he has the power to destroy this gem, but he requires assistance. Everyone le uh, lending a bit of their power, both magic-wise and other, uh, was successful and were able to destroy the phylactery sliver that held Roly's net currently being dissolved soul, uh, now returning it back to his body. After a prayer of healing spell, Roly <gasps> woke up from his unconscious state as the party are reunited. With a new drive and new concern, the party rest up and head back into the temple of Valkor to meet with the supposed wind god, now re revealed to be an air genie, who was, uh, an air genie who was working with Queen Evergrey. A familiar situation, just like the one in Isenby. After a long battle ensued with the Jinn, air, uh, air elementals, and the temple itself, the party leaves the temple successful. To say the least, it's been a stressful week <laughs> out here in the tundra and the city. Yeah. The Griffins explain the situation to the villagers of Mirbite and Teleport, 
teleport back to Elrak. We now join the party as they return, go through this like like space and time moment as Savannah finishes the sigils on the floor. This newly acquired spell through the use of a, a spell scroll. You guys are whisked. Numerous clouds of, of uh, snow and wind push back your face as you find yourself standing in an open thre- uh, main road looking up at a familiar apartment complex where you know that Moscow resides. Um, at this particular point, you, it would be about... I would say you rested up, you attacked in the morning, it would be a right about maybe 1 p.m. at this point. So. Oh, so we did take a long rest then? You didn't take a... I mean, you haven't taken a long rest since the fight. Oh, okay. Sorry. But you guys have returned. I mean, for meta, but for the most part, I don't think we'll need to, at least not right away. Right? No? What? I didn't hear the first part of what you said. Uh, I'm she's like, like meta-wise. I'd say we, meta-wise, we wouldn't, do we need to take a long rest right now? Or... No, uh, good question. I mean, we're in front of Moscow's apartment. Hit points? No. Spells? Maybe. <laughs> well, but... regardless, it is the middle of the day. You guys rested only a few hours ago, so you wouldn't be able to rest now. Yeah, I'm not going to take a rest now. Uh, but you do hear the clops of, of uh, horse uh, behind you pulling uh, carriages, people speaking from all different directions going about their day. Um, it's a busy day right now. Um, as people are going about their business, you hear the screams of businessmen uh, shouting out, sales, and come in and see our wares. Um, but yeah. You guys are free to do as you wish. Right now, Igno and Roman are currently dusting themselves off a bit of the snow that they've acquired from the spell. Um, definitely, Roman is sticking with Igno to sort of help him up. He's an older man. What does he need again for... Um... Igno? Yeah. He's a human. No, what does he need? What does he need? He needs a, 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 your necklace and, a, and I believe a... Yeah, he needs the necklace from the thing that he snapped the sigil off, your royal thing, mm-hmm. um, and a bit of dust. Oh, okay, that's easy. <laughs> but he's spent, so maybe another day. Okay. I'm assuming we have to go to Ruby's. <laughs> you want to do that now? I mean, when are we going to? Good point. And besides, I think we need to show her that he's alive and okay, at least. For that, Igno. Yes. I don't know how to put this nicely. Can we keep what exactly happened down to a minimal? Sort of like looks you uh, up and down, Savannah, and thinks about it for a second. Look, tra- his eyes starting to trail off. Specifically about the stone. I had a feeling. Um, I would like to discuss more about the stone if possible, but I understand not now. I would be happy to keep this information between us, but I would appreciate an audience if possible. That's fine with me, guys. <laughs> no. <Yeah. laughs> Rolly. Listen. We're already deep enough as it is. Do we really want to open up someone else to this? I'm. He's kind of involved. He's kind of already involved by and disintegrating I rather, it. <laughs> and I rather someone I somewhat trust be involved versus an entire domain involved. Well, if he gets involved, then he will most definitely alert his superiors because that is why he was sent here in the first place. Uh, Igno? <laughs> I would agree to stay quiet for now. I simply want to understand if we come to an agreement, maybe we can work something out. I don't have any issues with that. This is a lot bigger than what it seems on the surface. This is... <sighs> this is big. His this name was Rolly, really correct? Big. Sir Rolly? I brought you back. No, 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 no. You. I, I am not a knight. Please do not call me Sir Broly. I'm simply. Broly being, is fine. I'm simply being full. I have brought you back from the brink of death, from your soul being devoured. I was. I at least have earned a bit of knowledge. 
<sighs> this is gonna be another head on my conscience. I've joined the Domain Chosen for a reason. And I've stuck with the program. So I want to help out my fellow man. I will help you. And he kind of like taps Roman on the shoulder. Stick with them, show them where my tower is. I'll be waiting for you there. We can have a private discussion in my tower. Thank you, Igor. Of course. He kind of like sees that he's like in the middle of uh, Alrak and sees like the, the, the rise, the incline up to the actual castle and the numerous wizard towers that sort of surround the castle itself. I hate walking upstairs. <laughs> Just starts to slowly make his way up. Huh. Really? I think maybe, and I know I'm gonna get yelled at, but maybe you guys should wait outside when I go. I'll just bring Roman back. Because you forget that we've already told a certain group what was over there. It. I'm, Growth. I'm going to sleep. What I'm, am I supposed to do then? You can come if you want. Maybe it's better that he rests. You can rest, but you will not get the benefit of long rest. You just had a long rest a few hours you ago. You can take a cranky nap. <laughs> you can take a cranky nap. <laughs> I, will take, I will take a, a quiet moment of contemplation. Wait, so are you going with Igno or are you going to break into Moscow's apartment? Uh, I'm going to go talk to Moscow. And by talk to Moscow, I'm going to say hello. Can I borrow your couch? <laughs> or take get a drink. Yeah, that too. Okay. That comes later. <laughs> we can say that you guys, you do remember. Well, Savannah remembers because she wasn't the one super drunk last time you went to Moscow's we were no, We know we were in a room. You were in a room. <laughs> But definitely Savannah was the more sober of the bunch yeah. uh, as you start to lead them upstairs up to the third floor uh, a few doors down to where you do see the familiar uh, number of, uh, of Moscow's apartment sort of knocking on it uh, very loudly. Uh, Ellie, a uh, human uh, who you met from again uh, from the circus, opens the door. Moscow! Your friends are back! How are you guys? It's just rolling. Oh, it's just rolling? <laughs> yeah, we're <laughs> gonna go to Ruby's. Oh, you're gonna go with the Ruby? Okay. Yeah. Then we'll say that uh, opens it up. Slaps you on the back as you walk in, Rolly. Too fucking huge. Closes the door. <laughs> uh, Moscow is- Hello <laughs> to you too. <laughs> Sound annoyed. Thought you'd be used to me by now. Well, on the bright side, you're not the one that annoyed me today, so we're good. Mm. Well, count, up, count my blessings. Hey, uh, go your couch. She goes to the corner, and Moscow's currently like on the couch and sort of messing with something uh, with one of those make sure he sees you. Hey, Rolly, how are you? Where's uh, where's Vera? It's a long story. All right. Well, I don't have my shift for another few hours. Uh, want to tell me? No. Oh, that's a shame. What'd you come here for? Got a couch or a bed I can borrow? No. <laughs> I'll take the floor then. That you will. And I take the floor and I just hold Thir it. He throws you a pillow. <laughs> oh, Catch thank it. you. You're so generous. What a kind host. <laughs> oh, you're a kind guest. I give him that, like. Uh... <laughs> You're gonna sleep for a bit? Uh, you want coffee when you wake up? Oh, I'm not sleeping. I just need a minute. Oh. Or an hour. Or do you, do you want a you, I don't. Do you want a drink? Put a pin on that. We'll, we'll visit that later. You know I have you. You kind of like... It's like two opposing egos clashing right now. Uh, but Rolly, you do take a moment, sort of sitting on one of the rugged spaces, uh, so you're not exactly on the floor, but you do have a pillow there, just sort of <sighs> a moment to yourself to think. You just hear the constant sound of, uh, of paper being flipped around as Ellie is currently in the back doing more finances and writing some things down. Um, Luna is currently doing the, you know, sort of the 
graveyard ship. Probably it's about to end soon. Uh, but Moscow's currently on the couch messing with something. Uh, but our vision will go towards Vera and Savannah as you guys are following a little behind Igno, who's currently, he's left a little early than you guys, and you start to catch up because he's an old guy. It's not that quick. Um, but you do finally get to the very top of uh, this uh, this cliffside that is basically this elevated space uh, that is uh, Alrak. And um, yeah, you start to see the castle starting to come into view, along with the numerous wizard towers. Uh, Igno waves at you all, points at a particular tower, and goes, Mine's here. Uh, come, feel free to visit when you are done. Will do. And do you not walk normally? You said you hate stairs. Do you float? I used to. Oh. And then he's like t patting where like his book used to be. And he's like, I used to. No. It's been all these old bones. You'll get there. Twice as long, but eventually. Starts to trail off go into one of the towers, the door closes. Um, Roman, as opposed to you guys, uh, like, waves to the guards here, and they kind of like, recognize him, especially being a, a domain chosen in training, um, and starts to lead you guys deeper in. Looks to you all. So, you wanted to, s to Ruby, right? Yeah. I mean, she's the one that sent us, technically. Uh, all right. All right, um, could you grab Ruby, please? speaks to one of the guards who kind of acknowledges and starts to walk off. I mean, she should, she, we should meet her in her office, to be honest, so well, let's I, go there. I think that other group beat us, but I mean, I'm assuming she still wants a piece of information, I guess. Well, I'm, I'm sure she'd be happy to see that you guys are all okay, though. Yeah. And starts to lead you further in, once again passing this ice garden, where there are like these magical bubbles of green uh, you know, pottery and you know, just vegetation uh, sprinkled about this entire royal uh, garden. Going further in, uh, now for, for, uh, fully covered by an entranceway of a brown, green, and golden uh, entrance uh, with carpets and drapes, uh, different sigils everywhere as he sort of leads you off to the left uh, to the same sitting space and office area that you guys initially got wind about the concern for Mirabite. Um, she is not there currently, but Rowan definitely is like, we should sit, we'll wait, we'll see if when she comes by. Yeah, I don't mind a com semi-comfy chair. Uh, before sit. we continue that scene, roll your box starts to glow. <laughs> Fine, I guess I've neglected you for long enough. You open it up. Um, you don't hear the words, but you get the feeling of someone waving hello to you. Uh, and then you hear, I got you, dog. <laughs> it's a small world after all, and it's a small world after all. What are you gonna do for me? Hmm? <laughs> how, how do you got me, dog? And don't call me a dog. Rolly, stop talking to your box. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> We <laughs> strip <ship> back. <laughs> I like cutting that quick. <laughs> um, eventually, Ruby does come in. Um, the half elven form once again comes in, brown hair uh, down to her uh, down to her waist, uh, bluish garb with leather around um, that reaches all the way down to her uh, leather boots. She sees you all. <gasps> oh, um, where's the big? Did you all make it okay? Oh no, he's he's okay. He's resting. He's fine. He's resting. Good, good, good to know. Uh, and kind of, she circles around the uh, sitting space, sits down in her actual chair next to the desk. Um, well, I, I, you made it. I, I, I've, I've heard some strange reports, um, uh, from the blades. Yeah. So I, I'm excited to hear if you have anything further. And then I point towards Roman because he w was he with us? He yeah. wasn't with us. Roman's Roman's with you now. He, he wasn't with originally. us that time. He wasn't with us at that time though. No. Oh, great. You found him on the way. I mean, the one in training and Igno's home. Uh, it almost like 
she's you've noticed for the few times you've interacted with her she's a bit scatterbrained yeah. and definitely sort of like recognizes it and goes this is good news this is uh goodness me do you mind telling she's not sure who to address Savannah Roman or Vera and she's like what happened you have a paper and a quote. I do, I do. Starts to go through a drawer, brings out a paper, several pieces in that quill, ink. And Vera starts writing Lily's full name, what she looks like, where she can be found. This person has, I don't have all the answers for you, but, and as much as I can't trust people with a lot of those answers, you find her and you will find a lot more than you bargained for. She has to do with what happened with nearby. I know this person. I'll have to talk to Meryl. Yeah, it's kind of above our pay grade, but the troop armor that I wear used to report to her. And she has since deserted her troop. I see. Is there anything else you can provide me about what happened? Is it, what, what, what could you tell me? Somebody impersonating a powerful person led a whole community to believe that they were he was something. A god? <laughs> yeah, essentially hmm. that it was their god. And then Roman, uh, I'm not going to roleplay two, two characters talking to one another, but essentially Roman does acknowledge and confirm your story, uh, not divulging too much information as he's kind of aware of the gravity that you guys are involved in, just sort of the situation. Um, she sort of leans back and is definitely like in this moment of, it's a lot. Um, <laughs> All I gotta say is if you look into that person, be careful. And more than you think. Well, I, I, I wasn't... I honestly wasn't expecting you to go the further... this extra mile. I, I was simply looking for information, and you, and you did... beyond... beyond what I was expecting. Um, I mean, you've done a great service to, to the Domain. And we owe you more. Sadly, I, I don't have any other additional allocation funds for this expedition, so... I think she kind of reaches into the back and pulls the 2,000 gold that was promised for, like, the second place. Um, before she, like, reaches over to handle it, ha hand it to you, you hear several knocks at the door. Uh... And the door is already open at this point, uh, mm -hmm. and there stands is uh, <clears throat> apologies, apologies, apologies. <laughs> uh, there stands uh, Duncor, uh, the no, 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 not not Duncor. Malachi. Malachi, thank you. You're welcome. Yeah, <laughs> I'm assuming that, that was a different person. Uh, Malachi, who is kind of. You see him knocking at the uh, the actual frame of the door, uh, with the rest of the uh, the blades behind him. That's quite a tale. I think it was very wise, and I can't say how grateful we are that we didn't go through such an event. You steered us away from certain doom. When you're done here, we'll wait for you outside. We'd like to talk. Sounds fair. We're talking. <laughs> and they start no, to. No, Savannah's been staring daggers at Vera since she opened her. Sorry, right? <laughs> <laughs> you can butt in if you ever wish. Okay. It's already out there now. <laughs> but uh, they sort of walk further into sort of the get the the entrance area of the castle. Uh, you get a sense that they're just waiting for you when you're done. But uh, Ruby hands you the 2,000. Yeah, I was going to say, hand it to Sam. 
Ruby. I don't know what more we can say, but thank you. If you want to pay us back, pay us back by earning our trust. And it's what? not by earning our trust. It's not that I don't trust you. But there may come a day where we need the domain's help. And I will hope you don't hesitate. You gotta speak louder, girl. It's because we have the air on. I know, so you have and to speak louder. And you're deaf. <laughs> so you have to speak louder for me. I said there may be a day that comes where we may need the domain's assistance. And I hope she does not hesitate. Well, you're, you're certainly noted within our books. You, you saved an entire town. Um, we'll do what we can. And this one, and she points to Robin, I think has more than earned his stripes for what it's worth. Uh, he kind of like taps you and like, it's fine. I, I, I still have a bit to go. No. But he's like almost like nervously like, don't push me <laughs> further in. Don't do that. <laughs> kind of looks at Ruby. I'm, I'm fine. I, a few more. I, it taught me a lot. It's fine. <laughs> Well, um, I'm happy you're all safe. Thank you. Glad we got the job done. Uh, really nothing more to provide than that. If you guys would like to ask her something or you'd like to talk to the, the Blades, it's up to you. Okay, but they're waiting for us outside, I guess we have to go. Yeah. Okay. And just do a light bow to Ruby and just tell her thank you. And got yes. out. <laughs> sure. Uh, Roman actually give, gives you a wave and says, uh, you've seen the tower. I'll wait for you there. Yeah. Okay. I'll see you later. Or should I get, should I get Roly? Uh, well, let him rest. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll fill him in. Yeah. Okay. He kind of walks in. Uh, the blades are standing out there at the entrance. Uh, definitely Malachi, who sort of greets you all, sort of the de facto leader. Uh, <laughs> you know, the two uh, uh, half-elven twins, as well as the uh, the Manticore behind him. Definitely the smaller of the two. Manticore. Or uh, what was he again? Uh, not Manticore. Minotaur. Minotaur. Thank you. I was like, damn, you roll with a Manticore. <laughs> Minotaur. Uh, he. Gives you a smile and goes, Someone impersonating themselves at a, as a god, that's... That's what I told you. I wasn't sure if you were being... <laughs> was Jesus you know, like, kind of lying to me or, or something, but there was something in your tone. I mean, you could have showed up. We could have. We definitely could have, but we took he we took heed of the warning, and uh, you folks put yourself in danger and took it upon yourself. Uh, he reaches into his bag, starts to fumble a bit, and hands you a rolled up piece of parchment. What's this for? I'll take it. <laughs> Consider it a gift from the blades Unroll. to your crew. Uh, it is a uh, a choice of land and uh, building. When we came back to report what you've told us, we selected land. So we didn't get the money. But you saved our lives, essentially, so I think it's earned. And where? <laughs> uh, so Here. I will give you guys options. You guys can choose what you'd like in terms of land, but I would recommend maybe getting Rolly because so you all can have a decision on this. Yeah, I have to... I'll just go ahead and sit in the bag. I'm just kind of dumbfounded. I'm like, that's a... Thank you. Are you sure? <laughs> <laughs> we'll continue working. It's fine. There will always be jobs. Thank you. <laughs> you did the domain of service. You did us a service too. It's only fair. Maybe we'll work together and it's not competition next time. <laughs> I don't know, we do our best when it comes to competition, but <laughs> I, I would like that. 
Definitely. Then make it a friendly wager instead. Yeah. You definitely see uh, <laughs> the, the two twins are like, I like that. <laughs> I All right. That sounds fine. <laughs> yeah, if you're ever in the neighborhood of Alrak, we plan to stay here for a bit. Probably be around for another day or so. We'll see. Well, it's a pleasure to meet you all. The Axis. <laughs> and they kind of nod to you all, each one. And then they leave, walking out to the front uh, beyond into where it's lightly snowing now. I can't hear. <laughs> can't hear me? No. Better? Yeah. Okay, let's see. We have Something the about land, land, land. <laughs> I'm, I'm still kind of dumbfounded. I'm like, land? What are we going to do? I have an idea, but I don't know if Rolly will go with it. I mean, Moscow is trying to buy eight thousand, save eight thousand dollars so they could buy their own bar. What if we just invest? Well, we could talk to Rolly about it, but I'm not opposed to this idea. I think it'd make him so pretty happy. Sorry, go on. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Should we go get Rolly, or do you want to talk to Igno first? I kind of just want to talk to Igno by ourselves. I get Rolly. I really do. Because I feel like we, we keep adding to the head count, but everybody's choice is their own. And I quite, quite cannot resurrect him again. I can, magically. I don't know if mentally if I'm prepped for that. And we need help some way or somehow. It can't just be us three all the time. I understand that. I'm still dealing with trust, I guess. No, I get that. But we're gonna have to lend the olive branch, so to speak, eventually. But we oh. don't know how far Lily's reach is, and that's my thing. <laughs> huh? If she was able to get up all the way up to the top of the domain, where else has she been? It doesn't help that they wiped pretty much all the history of Evergreen, you know? I mean, elves live a long time. It's kind of the king, not the kingdom, but it, I mean, whoever kept the history at the time's fault for not wanting that around. So it was kind of like a prelude to a warning of what could come back. But I mean, she used that to her advantage. If nobody knows about you, of course, you just find your way where you want to be. If you try hard enough. <laughs> Alright. I trust That's... Igno. I don't I don't think he's just, you know, wants to die for fun, at least where he was. <laughs> I'm feeling Igno out, but I strangely trust Roman Roman. I do too. Helps that he has a nice bear. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. Alright. Uh, I do... wonder if that's the only reason why you trust him. <laughs> Just because he's got a You have a pet, therefore I, I mean, trust you. The, the, the bear helps. <laughs> the bear helps. Uh, you guys walk out uh, past the garden space. Uh, so beyond the garden space, there's actually like this circular walkway that goes to each of these uh, wizard towers that go up like seven stories, eight stories tall. Uh, all differently made, having some sort of like shift and sway that uh, is almost like a representation of the actual owner. Um, you do sort of circle around about three store, uh, three towers until you finally reach where Roman is currently petting uh, Violet, who's been released from the, ta uh, the tattoo, and is currently just talking to her uh, just for, you know, random nonsense and sees you all. And you <sighs> brings her back into the tattoo. I was gonna pet her. Uh, oh! <laughs> Sorry. Uh, it's, it's, we don't have pets, Robin. We don't have pets, okay? I, it's tight to go in. It, she takes a lot of space. Okay, but you gotta bring her out before we leave. Otherwise, I'm gonna be mad. Maybe when we leave. I don't know. Well, when we go inside. Yeah, I don't want her to break Igno's whole probably fancy array of rooms in there. Right. <laughs> Um, well, he's instructed me to show you how to get in, if you ever feel wishing to visit him in the future. Okay. So okay. He goes to the door, 
um, within this tower, opens it up, and you see what looks like to be a, a like a very short hallway, about 25 feet. Not even that, like maybe 20 feet uh, less. Uh, he walks you in as it's like red carpet, stone walls that are currently holding these braziers up, uh, lighting the entire space to another door at the end. Um, there are paintings to the left and right. Um, let's see here. <clears throat> Do, 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 do. Where are you? Mm. I have information about the... Dun, dun, dun. There you go. Uh, the small hallway ha holds, holds uh, moving uh, paintings. Uh, one of them, uh, Igno, uh, facing against a band of trolls single-handedly. You see him holding a book as well as a staff on uh, a right hand. Uh, an arcane lightning bolt coming out. And you see it slowly crackling and moving uh, as the the light that is reflecting off this arcane light lightning bolt is like flashing against his face along with the other uh, uh, trolls. The other one is a rundown building that is currently being dust swarmed with snow and dust uh, where a it's a picture of him with two other figures uh, an elven woman uh, and oh no sorry, sorry there's three pictures this other one is him next to this broken down building and he's currently pulling someone out of a rubble, like out of this like this collapsed building. The third picture is him with an arm around an elven woman and another arm uh, next to what looks like to be a half elven boy. Uh, you could definitely see like elven features, but they're not totally uh, like exaggerated. So you do get a sense like it's not fully elven, um, and they're just sort of smiling uh, as they look upwards. But uh, to the opposite door, it's this big red door that has like a golden sigil around it. Rowan walks up to it, knocks on it three times, turns the handle all the way, and it kind of goes like too far where you have to sort of move your hand, and then immediately lets go. The handle itself starts to spin faster and faster and faster and faster until it starts to light up the edges, and, and the door is gone, and you just see what looks like to be a small five by five space. You all have to like get in. He sort of ushers you inside. You all have to like scrunch inside, getting a bit of space. Um, <laughs> library, please. Do you feel the like something is rocketing you upwards as you start to feel the gravity pushing you downwards until finally <laughs> door opens and uh, what is in front of you? is a fairly large library with a um, uh, a stone space that covers a, uh, a fireplace that's currently lit. Um, there's the smell of tea uh, as well as herbal. It's almost like walking into a very old school bookshop where you can smell the pages. Um, mm. The shelves are going you know high, high to a point where you think they probably go to the next floor, you know, but the the floor itself is definitely like wavering a bit, almost as like something is arcane holding it up, something magical. Um, they're sitting in a comfortable, there's multiple chairs and couches, uh, but they're sitting in one of the uh, chairs uh, next to the fireplace is Igno, who's currently just thumbing through a book, um, definitely furiously reading as he hears the door open. He looks to you all. Good, good, you found your way. Um, take a seat, please. I, I, I've there's tea if you wish to have some. Uh, I am welcome to help. Sit down. Sit down. That's awful narrow in there. That's all I'm gonna say. Uh, not a lot. I don't get this many visitors at once. I'll say that much. I kind of gathered. Mm -hmm. <laughs> How are you feeling? I'm feeling a lot better. Uh, especially now, and he kind of like excitingly, almost like a kid-like expression as he sort of reaches behind and you see what looks like it'd be a dusty tome, and he's like, <laughs> my spare. It doesn't have everything, but it's got some, I feel better, I feel complete, I feel whole. Ah, some, well, That's a relief. It is, it absolutely is. So, well, it, it's very important to keep backups and backups upon backups. Backups upon backups and backups. Ignore you talk to yourself. Sorry. <laughs> it's 
I, I need to go over it a bit. Uh, some of these are kind of useless uh, spells, duplicates and things of the sort, but I can work with this and I feel better. <laughs> Puts it away. Sounds good at least. Well, well, um, welcome to my tower. Uh, every wizard tower on the property, uh, each one, uh, has uh, ruins around them that make divination magic harder to peer upon. Uh, upon. So uh, this is a safe space if you wish to speak uh, more. I would definitely like to learn more about, well, the sliver. Why do you folks know more about that? Like, what is your experience with it? He's an elf, right? He's a human. Oh, he's a human. And he's old. <laughs> no um, I don't even know to start. Um, well, the only reason <laughs> I could say what started this was, you know, what happened to Roly. <laughs> there was a good chance that was going to be me. Goodness gracious. And, I don't know, Vera, you're the smart one. <laughs> Technically, you're the smart one with the band. I know, but still. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Apparently, Vera's the one that's used to talking to people. Um, I mean, that changes things. And now, I mean, you work around people in power, right? All oh, pretty, absolutely. Probably all, the time. all your life, given your stature? Since my birth. Do you feel like the domain exercises good judgment when they have that power? <laughs> Most of the time. The way I see government officials and how whether the domain or the kingdom utilize their power, I don't see them using it for nefarious means, or at least I've never experienced that. However, there are idiots abound. <laughs> And those idiots sometimes make it to power. So, in such, sometimes power makes stupid decisions. Wow. If, I knew I liked you for a reason. <laughs> and if I cannot control my own fate, and if I cannot control the information I understand without being spoon-fed by some idiot higher above, then I don't trust it. Everything that's ever been told to me, either by the domain or by some sort of representative from the kingdom, I double-check. Good man. We'll get along fine then. <laughs> it's like a Roman. I like him. <laughs> so there's a reason why I wanted to go with him. He's got a good head. There was a person in power a long, long time ago that felt that if you did not learn magic by utilizing books and you were born that way or worshipped a god or by any other means, you were frowned upon, and you did not deserve to live. This sounds familiar. Said person was essentially cast out, all that history was wiped, and those stones are a part of that person. How does that sound familiar? I don't like saying her name. <laughs> I think you should say his name. Uh, say her name, though. I will. Her name was Queen Evergrey. About 300 years ago. <sighs> hold on, hold known on. for going crazy? He starts to... starts to cast a spell. Um, essentially like a locate object spell. Mm. Finishes it up and you see what looks like to be small little ruins start, start to like create a little path. Uh, to one of the books off in the far right shelf. And he's like, ah, well, there it is. Pulls it from it. Ah. The Evergrace. Yes. Um, what? You know how hard it's a, to get a book of that stupid woman? We oh. Found, found it in some no. desert. <laughs> this is not a, this is not official literature material. Oh. I just mentioned that I do my own research. Any research is helpful at this point. Mm. Well, when it comes to the Evergrace, it's very nefarious, or nefarious, but uh, notorious, that a lot of the history surrounding the Evergrace 
is somewhat lost to the ages. It, 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 and there was a particular reason why. Um, but let me go over some old notes that I've written numerous years ago and see if maybe I can jog my own memory. Um, it starts to go through it. Uh, okay, uh, Catherine Evergrey uh, was the last of the Evergrey line, uh, royal line, uh, and was also the last head of the Evergrey Empire. Uh, I, I, the, the castle sits within the city of Overfield, now renamed Aftonborough. Uh, records, as I mentioned before, are a bit dicey, to say the least, uh, in this pit point of history due to the separation of the empire Efforts were more put into the creation of the Estivist Domain and the Sildan Kingdom. As such, there was less le record-keeping of the old country, as there were to speak, as there were more focus into the creation of new civilizations. However... Think oh, yes. No, same. I was going to say, I think most of that we already knew, I Good. think. It is hard information we, to come by. Not, not many people would, speak about the Evergreys anymore. I don't think she, we knew she was the last of her line. I don't think we were sure about that. Well, well uh, uh, the last, uh, or at least the uh, accounts of, uh, uh, one account of the incident report that happened within Catherine Evan Grey, uh, uh, seems that she ordered some sort of violent actions to fall upon a portion of the populace. Now, from what you've informed me, it sort of points to you, Vera, she was targeting those who did not what well, repeat basically people like me if you were born with some type of magic okay. or if you worshipped a god or made a pact with another being anything that wasn't book learned if you did not learn your magic from a book then she targeted you i see in other words your powers had to be earned uh, a purist that's what she thinks. It's a, an old world term uh, given to those who received magical abilities not akin to uh, those who pull it from a god, those who uh, twist the weave uh, by either art or creation and things and such. My thing is though, from what we've learned, she went back on all that logic, so I mean she's kind of two-faced. I was that's interesting. There is no record of that happening. Um, but yes, the final uh, records show that she had this, uh, some sort of violent act upon the populace, at least a portion of it. But there was also signs, uh, especially from the staff of the Evergrey, stating that she showed signs of mental instability and was also mentally unfit to be queen at that particular moment. Um, no one knows the sudden shift in mentality. We don't know. Uh, lost to the records. Uh, she was exiled, and during a five-year limbo period, the empire was disbanded, and as such, the beginnings of the uh, of the kingdom and the domain. And closes the book. <laughs> Bit of dust <laughs> uh, comes out, and he puts the book back. No one knows what happens to her. Then. You said five years limbo period between her ring and the separating to the domain in the kingdom, or what is this five year limbo? Oh, essentially, that what that means is after she was exiled and there was no leaders, the Evergrey Empire tried to last without the Evergreys for five years. During this time, there was turmoil, definitely a power vacuum was left, and essentially, the populace agreed that they just needed to abandon the kingdom, this fallen kingdom, and create new ones. I'm wondering if any of that staff is still around. Perhaps. Uh, there definitely are elder folks who live longer than 300 years. Um, yeah, but I would imagine it's very difficult to find them. I don't even think they'd want to be found if they disliked her that much. Who and the, the kingdom and during that five year period, the in-between time? Um, numerous reports. Uh, either a collection of, of the populace who banded together to consider themselves some sort of council. Um, they even tried to have a new uh, empress. Unfortunately, there is no name and record, just sort of uh, talks and rec uh, records. Um, that didn't work out. No one trusted her opinion either. It was just a bunch of people. 
trying different things to keep their life going. And it just didn't work out. So, you know that lovely person that we all know and love? I thought... I don't know. Something about her just screams that it's more than a worship, if you get what I mean. I was actually thinking the same thing. Back to the, the, the issue at hand. So, you're telling me that there's some sort of connection between the Sliver and the Evergrades. We're in the... well, it's a running thought that that goes back to her somehow. I see. And being now that we understand what it does, I don't think she's truly gone. Well, I certainly wish I didn't destroy it now. Well, I do wish I did. Uh, no, we're very gr no. We're, we're grateful that she destroyed it. I am grateful and that I She does not need any more power with thoughts like that and the people that she apparently keeps. Well, the reason why I say that is I wish I had a stone to research. I could perhaps see where the souls are going to. Uh, yeah, without even thinking, I pull out the stone. <laughs> She's just looking at Sav like, uh, you gonna... Oh, good lord, you had another one! Well... Yeah, I think we've encountered three now? Oh, good lord! <laughs> no, oh yeah, well there was three. We just didn't realize there was three. Yeah, anyway, um... <laughs> Anyways. Um... Maybe not touch Remember how I said it for some reason I keep finding being brought into this? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It also doesn't help that you like shiny things. And they I shiny. like shiny things. Leave me alone. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's your... You found it as your property. But upon your approval, I wish to spend some time with it and study it. Can you get rid of it? I mean, you can I mean, study it. You can study it. <laughs> but we want to get rid of it. I don't need any... We don't need any more ties to her than we already have. Well, certainly knowing what it is, I agree. That destroying it is perhaps the best option, but it could do us some some positivity if we find out where it's going to. Just be careful. The utmost. Um. Oh my goodness! Hold on. He sort of pulls behind his sort of matted hair, uh, since he is like balding, but he has like the hair that sort of flows from the back. Sort of pulls from that. It feels like a little thing. Uh, Ili, uh, could you bring uh, the black one, please? Yeah. All right then. It's back. <laughs> and then from the uh, that's sort of essentially it's an elevator. Uh, you see uh, the same elven woman um, that you saw in the picture uh, come in. Oh, you have guests. Hello. Um, Ignodia, here's your. So it hands a blackened wand that is almost crooked and, and misshapen. Oh, uh, I'm sorry. Uh, did you have a group name? Something I can address to you quicker. I mean, we're uh, going Griffin? with that. Griffins. Yeah. Illy, this is the Griffins. Uh, they've helped me come back. She's sort of nods. And, Thank you very much. We were very, very worried. Ignos, that's your... Huh? <laughs> Is it Igna? Is that your wife? Oh, yes. Uh, <laughs> oh. Married. I didn't want to assume. <laughs> but, um, I'm going to end up opening it, dear, so you you may want to. She kind of like backs away and goes into the. Uh, and she gives you once again a wave. Do do we, you, she sort of sticks her head back out of it. Do you want any food? Any snacks? Tea's fine. Tea's lovely. I'll be right back. Kitchen, please. You know, I don't think we would have fit in there with Rolly. <laughs> we would have had to go two funny. trips. I don't know, he probably still would still, still have been hunched if it's only five foot. He yeah. grabs uh, this crooked wand and jams it into the floor, and you hear... <laughs> and he... Uh, with his sort of olden body, rips upwards, and you see that the... The crack that it did to the floor is now doing it to the actual air itself, making almost this split in this dimension. As you see beyond it, just sort of a purple and black inky void that is devout of anything and sitting right in the middle of this other world is a, like an, almost like an iron vault. 
Ah. And you see that the crooked blackened wand is now like near the tip is like red hot, like it's glowing. Whew. Ooh, okay, all right. Put that into the, dumps out his tea and puts it into the cup. <laughs> that needs to cool down for a little bit. Um, I plan to study it perhaps tomorrow after I've rested and gotten a bit of my, my abilities back. Uh, apologies for this. <sighs> and claps his hand, this sort of wave of arcane energy goes beyond, and you guys cannot hear or talk. You guys are deafened, essentially. <laughs> uh, he walks into the portal, and you guys can see it, though you can't hear it. He says something to the, uh, to the, uh, to the, the safe as these iron-like handles circular in motion. <laughs> And the stone door opens. He reverses this sort of wave arc energy you can finally hear uh, again. If you may, put, uh, just simply put it into the vault, uh, and I should have access to it when it comes down to study. I walk into. <laughs> I walk to the vault. It is just a... because it's a vanna. I'm nosy. What's in there? <laughs> uh. Well, damn it, that's a good question, because now you caught me. Uh, there are numerous artifacts inside. There looks to be like a modeled ship inside with black sails. Um, there is what looks like to be a skeleton, uh, like not skeleton, but a skull of a, uh, you know, bone skull with uh, these ruby gem eyes uh, that is further back in. Uh, and there looks to be uh, a necklace of gold uh, with a sapphire uh, with a symbol of what looks like to be a leaf. Obviously, I can't take anything, so I'm just gonna put it down next to the, the sapphire necklace and back away. All right. Sort of motions with his hands in the door. All right. The we black got... cells are nice. Oh, thank you. I appreciate it. It took me numerous years, and I still haven't figured out what it is. We need. We have thirty seconds. We need to leave. Oh. <laughs> so she, he kind of ushers you out of this portal and but, immediately... But pretty! <laughs> it's pretty, but we would have been lost, lost in there. So. Oh. Yeah, I'm good out here. But, um... I recognize that you have the ability, and I do too. I will be sending you messages whenever I have new information about it. Well, I wouldn't expect any less. Good thing I only need four hours of sleep. You definitely look a bit... Tired, I, and I, I, I understand that, especially what we went through. So, do you have anything on a family called the Blakes? The Blakes, um, Blake Manor, in I forgot that city. Uh, but not far, so, um, Rebind? Yeah, where we met. Someone roll me a deep. Actually, since Rolly, I know uh, you are currently just on a different space. You're gonna roll for Igno. See if he remembers. Roll me a d20 plus eight. He has a very high. I history. imagine if he's got a freaking wizard tower oh. in the vault. Plus eight. Oh. Uh, he kind of sits back in his chair. There are numerous Blakes uh, across history. Um, Mm, you... Movement of families happens. I don't have a full history of it. I'll have to get back to you on that. All I gotta say is if you're gonna do your your work on them, be careful. But a lot of what was in those caverns also relates to them. Okay. I was going to ask them why do you want me to look them up? But I understand now. Should we have them look up for Lily's family as well? I say that to Vera. I don't even know if Underwood is her true last name. Doesn't hurt to try. I gave Ruby the description of a general, and she just taps her 14. Mm -hmm. That was a royal general for the Sildon Kingdom. Her name is Lily Underwood. She is an elf. She has silver long hair and silver eyes, very much resemblance of the Everglades themselves. And she's kind of mixed up in all this. And she seems to be, I don't even know how to put it, a henchman 
a worshiper, whatever you want to call her, but she is hell-bent hell on bringing Evergrave back. And we're kindly on her radar. Me specifically. All right. I will keep those through. I'll look up what I can find about the sliver. If I can find any books about it, I'll see what I can find about the lineage of the Blakes. And I am aware of who Lily Underwood is. Most are. I'll probably have to ask a few kingdom contacts I have to do some sort of covert. Just watch who you ask, because I don't know who's wrapped into it. I have some Part trusted okay. colleagues. I appreciate it. You two, both, really. Thank you. Um, Roman walks to you both. I don't know where your journey is going to lead you. Um, but I just wanted to say thank you. Saving me and saving my mentor. Um, I appreciate the boost you gave me, Vera, but I still need to go into training. Me too. The events in Mirabite show me that I need to get a little bit stronger, maybe more, to protect my own. I gave you the boost because you deserved it. As much as you don't think you're ready, you're ready in the right time. Mm. So, just as much as you give yourself credit for your faults, give yourself credit for what you have earned. Maybe I'll come to that point where I'll believe in myself, but until then, I know I can do good. I just need to be better. He'll get there. So he leads you out, essentially. He's going to stay here in the in the the tower with a you gnome, know, sort of catching up with his mentor, who's been gone for quite some time. Wait. He promised us Violet. <laughs> the, still in the library. Oh, we'll say it's outside. Yeah, well, outside. Really. Outside the uh, the polar bear. Just this one of these to the face. <laughs> Stay again, safe. Rub. We'll be back, friend. You'll see mm. us again. Be good. Keep these two out of trouble. No, no, no. Keep them in trouble. <laughs> and just sort of nudges both of you. She ever has, I don't know what the hell, shadow babies, I want one. <laughs> Can they do that? <laughs> I don't even know. It's magic, maybe. I'm still learning, so I don't know. <laughs> While you figure it out, you have Igno send me a message, and I will come to go get my <laughs> polar bear baby. <laughs> Sounds a good plan. Or come find us. We'd yeah. like to see your face. Come have a drink with us one day. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds fun. Sure. Yeah. Good luck, guys. Same to you. Mm. Walks back into the tower. <sighs> I hope Broly's nap did him well. <laughs> well, you can certainly pick him up, and do you guys want to see your choices in terms of... Oh, yeah. Well, we gotta yes. talk to him about the well, land yeah, let's, let's tell Roly what's going on. <laughs> Fast forwarding as you guys quickly go down <laughs> by the stairs. <laughs> and uh, you get to Moscow's apartment, knock on the door. Roly, you're awakened by the knock. Um, uh, Moscow said this time sort of motions as you start to see Roll, you start to waken up, opening one eye. You see Moscow sort of like sit down, Ellie. I got it. Pulls out a arcane uh, mage hand that opens the door. Come in! Walk in. Oh! Well, there's the ladies! You're awfully trusty. What if we were robbers? I what if we were murderers? You think I'm afraid of some robbers? <laughs> um, you should probably should be. I know a couple of them. I mean, I've I seen some weird people, people in the carnival. It's kind of hard to surprise me, but regardless, I'm happy to see you all here, safe and sound. Uh, your big one is here, and sort of kicks the floor where Rolly's at. We know. <laughs> we know, we sent them. <laughs> We're good. Make yourselves at home. Uh, Rolly, can we talk to you for a second? Ugh. Fine. God forbid. Come on, man. Also, Rolly, you essentially had the effect <laughs> of a short rest. Yay. 
still. Uh, all right, fine. I'll I'll roll for everything later. No, no worries. You guys are. I will say this one metagaming. You guys are no not in any immediate danger. Um, and by the way, after speaking with the higher ups as well as turning in your quest, you guys have finished this arc and you guys are now level ten. Da, 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 da. Uh, so first and foremost, as we do here, whenever we level up, I'm going to go around the room and ask you guys, how do you like to handle your, um, well, you're leveling up. Uh, Vera, for your HP, would you like to roll or would you like to take the average? You can take the average plus my tough feet. All right. So your, your tough feet gets you a plus two to your HP. Uh, I believe as a cleric, you have a standard five, if I remember correctly. And what is your con modifier? Uh, right now it's one. It's one? Mm -hmm. So essentially, let's double check here. So five plus three, because you were tough, you get a plus eight to your HP. Oh, okay. Uh, down the line, Rolly, uh, how would you like to handle your HP? Would you like to roll for it? I think I would take the average. Take the average. What is your con modifier? Plus three. Plus three. Uh, an average is seven, so plus three, that'd be ten. You get plus ten to your HP. Da, 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 da. Uh, now, I think when it comes to rogues, it's a little different, plus ten. Rogues, on the other hand, oh, well, let's do your HP first. Uh, Standard. Oh, well, actually, no, maybe we should do this first. <laughs> Standard. Good to know. So that means it is a five, plus your con modifier, which is zero, so you get a plus five to your, a uh, your HP. Uh, in addition to that, rogues they get an ability score improvement at this level. Mm -hmm. So I, you can work it out where if you want to upgrade any of your stats or if you want to take a feat, you can decide that a little later on if you wish. Well, hold on that because I might look at the feats. Otherwise, I might fix. I might have to try to fix that con modifier. Not to worry. <laughs> so we're going to go through a couple of downtime moments here, guys, after you decide on what your essentially your property is going to be. And during that time, Savannah, you can decide on what you like to have. Well, we're going to split the money. Maybe it'll make Grumpy Pants feel a little better. <laughs> <laughs> so we have 2,000. Are we splitting it with Roman or are we leaving him alone? Oh. Split time four, that's about 500 each? Yes. Uh, you don't need to get Roman any money. Oh. He, he, but, earns a, but he earns principal. a salary. Oh, okay. He well, earns a too. salary. <laughs> and the principal. <laughs> Hold on. I think but it's I mean, it's a team decision, though. <laughs> I mean, I vote for it. Rolly? Mm. I mean, he did help, so I guess it's only fair. So 500 yeah, each. 500 each. Well, someone send it to Roman. Sure. We'll say we gave it to him before we left. <laughs> Easy enough to <laughs> Violet and, uh, and carries. I roll out the scroll on the table and like, so Rolly, mm. how would you like to be a landowner? The blades. Uh, what now? The blades gave us their prize for coming first. Yeah, instead of, you know, taking the money, they got property. But... But... <laughs> Not everybody's goal is money, Chloe, but... Yeah, I mean, we could do a lot with the property. And uh, we can use it to make money? We were thinking... Rolly begins to do the saddest weep. <laughs> it starts internal, and then it just can't contain itself and starts going external. And it's Rolly, just like... <laughs> Rolly, stop. No. Stop. Anybody no. should be weeping, it's me over them diamonds now. <laughs> get you your diamonds. So, Things are replaceable. <laughs> on the piece of paper, Savannah, that as you start to read out, it has four properties as well as four buildings upon those land that you can own. You have to select one. Uh, in essence, one is called the tower. The next one's called the church. The other one's called the townhome. The last one's called the pub. We're gonna go through a few of them, and I can actually show you what they look like. As oh. this could be your base of operations. Fancy. So I feel like the elevator music should be playing, or the. Dun, 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 dun. Oh yeah. <laughs> we, we, it's like a. Um, Price music or Price is Right. Price is Right. <laughs> Let's see. Let's put We're on not a... trying to beat each other by a dollar. <laughs> No, that's that's too sad. Let's do uh No, I have a good one. Sure, why not? I'm running out of them. Why not? Alright. Let's go to the first one. 
So the first one was the tower. I'm gonna guys. I'm gonna put you guys on a map here. Uh, you guys should be able to see everything. Oh yeah. Yes. So essentially, the way we have it is, I'm gonna put you guys on the first floor. You guys are led to uh, one of the smaller towers next to the castle. Um, this one here is four stories with a basement. Uh, I'm gonna put you on the first floor, which is right here. Is a living space with a kitchen. Um, as you start to explore this area, it does go up one higher where you do see a similar library space with a stone uh, fireplace off in the corner. Going up one higher looks like a shared living space. And of course the fourth, uh, wait, how many floors does this have? One, two, a three, lot. four, five. It shouldn't have five. <laughs> it should have only four. <laughs> that top one doesn't exist. <laughs> that one does not exist. I don't know what it's doing here. I will get rid of that later. Uh, well, regardless, uh, the last one is an empty space that you guys can edit and change in any way you wish. And if you go down one floor down, it shows like a study space that has the ever fading sigils of a teleportation circle. The benefit of going with the tower is that uh, it has a small tiny yard uh, and be, uh, surrounding the yard as well as the tower itself are small sigils that make divination magic difficult to be used to scry inside. That is super tempting. Yeah. So keep that in mind. Be like Moscow, you make the bottom floor into a bar, and the rest of no, no, no. we'll take. have to like send them a second floor, like stairways up, because I don't think we need people have it, access to that. But thoughts. Yeah, and it's <laughs> it, it's it's changeable. You can make it where other people can, so many people can't. So it's almost like a thing where you can change it. You can make the rooms any way you wish. Uh, but it is an option there. Uh, the next one is the church. We're gonna go to the church now. This is the church. A small cathedral uh, that is in the middle of Alrak uh, that has an adjacent living space. It is completely open. You guys can mess with it and edit it any way you wish. Um, the entire building offers a plus 10 temporary hit points when long rested inside. In addition, uh, resurrection spells or any other spells that make people or allow people to come back to life require only half the cost while doing it inside here. Mm. Interesting. <laughs> I, I can, can't. Can't. Can, 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 can we create our own cult? No. No. I'm not going to stop you. What you guys want to do? The cult of the Griffins, no. where we take donations from the cult members. You can I hire mean... someone. Do you want me to grift as a cult? I am not going to grift out of a church. You're a rogue. You should have no problem with this. <laughs> no, no, I can grift. I'm just not out of a church. That, even for me, that feels wrong. <laughs> uh, next you, one. You, hold, hold, hold on, hold on. You went, to, you went to your friend's hometown village and tried to grift his people. How is this worse? Well, it wasn't I at a church. I, I, <laughs> it wasn't at a church. I wasn't going to piss off someone's god. There's still God here. Beyond that, there's also the town town home. So this one here, for you guys. In terms of space, this is the biggest. Uh, in terms of the amount of rooms that you have, as well as a yard space, um, it is a small townhouse that has two stories. Right now, you're standing on the first story. The one adjacent to the right has this is the second story. Um. It has uh, two extra rooms as along uh, with a shed out back, a very large backyard. This place offers the most space. It also offers a 10% discount on all items purchased in Alrak. Hmm. You know what I feel like? It's just like D&D &D giving millennials an idea of what home, home buying might actually look like. <laughs> I feel like not. this is a meme. <laughs> <laughs> this is why this is a fantasy game. <laughs> Clearly, we are Clearly. talking to a realtor. We are having, we are doing an open house. Yeah, <laughs> you have a little gnome friend who's yeah. like, Oh, so you want to have yourself a new prop? Oh, you've got a property here. Let me show you the four places you can go to. <laughs> here we have the tower, the church. This is the home. home. Uh, being a resident here means that you are now a resident of Alrak. And of sort, you will have uh, a discount upon the uh, merchants that yeah, work here. We definitely like to treat our residents well. Uh, would you like to see the fourth one? Mm -hmm. Excellent. 
Uh, the last one is a little bit of a rust housing one. Uh, in terms of space, you are sharing with a property. Uh, here we have uh, the tavern. Uh, the bottom floor is a, uh, a pub-like space, numerous chairs and a bar area. Um, in addition, there is a storage space that houses food along with drink. Um, there is a staircase that leads off to the second story, which has a semi, uh, very uh, cram, not cram, uh, uh, cozy uh, area up on the top where you can live above the pub. Uh, this space, what it offers you is that uh, it can make money for you uh, with hired hands. I mean, you already know my uh, thoughts on this, Sav. So. I know, How much but... money? It depends on your height, staff. Well, uh, what are we ballparking here? I don't know. I'm not the business owner. I guess we didn't tell Rolly we were thinking of giving it to Moscow. We didn't get a chance as soon as we said land. We ran off to the our gnome realtor. Well, uh, it's very tiny wimey <laughs> in terms of this space. If you want to go back to Moscow, you could tell them something. But well, we're not going to tell them until we make an agreement. That's what I was going to say. Well, the whole thing is, you pro we probably should tell Moscow our idea because he might he, he's the type of man that won't accept it. He might not accept it. <laughs> oh, I think he'll accept it. He lives with two other people. <laughs> Pride still there. Pride. We can force him to accept it. I think. Good luck. I I, I kind of look at That's our gnome easy. friend and be like, "When do we need to make a decision?" Uh, there is no expiration date on this um, property tag, so you have as much time as you wish. I mean, I'm I'm all for the pub idea, but I'm not gonna lie, the tower and the town hall sound sound nice too. <laughs> I just like the tower. I don't care about the town. <laughs> I mean, the town hall would be useful because it's big. We can do a lot with it. If you wanted to move Moscow and then win with us, there's space. Um, and half off all our stuff. <laughs> the only kicker for me is the teleportation circle. But that's that, just, yeah. That's the only thing that I'm like kind of interested on that one. But I don't know. The, we already had her say she wants to give it to Moscow, so like we, it's where you invest and make money off it. But that's I, that's a good point, and why I like the pub. We'll be helping family, and I wonder if I can convince the Ravens, cause um, um kids to attach to it. Oh fuck! I mean, at the bottom. <laughs> at the bottom. Yeah. I'm like, I wonder if I can convince them to attach to it. Cause then you would have a portal here. Then you wouldn't need a teleportation circle. Is, would Moscow be okay with working with Aziz then? <laughs> I mean, he worked with a circus. I don't think... It's a discussion. That's no... I have to ask the Richards how they feel about that. That's, but it's a thought. <laughs> uh, you can definitely say that we fast forward and go to Moscow's place, who currently is an hour away you know, until his shift starts. So he definitely... <laughs> you, you knock Wait, on his door. Wait, didn't say anything about this, though. <laughs> Oh, well, I'm waiting for people to talk, so... I mean, things. yeah, I was thinking about actually doing it, doing the tower, where we could make the first floor uh, Moscow's bar. It'd be a small bar, but a bar nonetheless. We could make the second floor the living quarters, we could make the tower or the roof part our quarters, and then we could make the bottom of the tower, the basement area with the teleportation circle, like, a portal for Sav's thing. But here's the thing. Towers big tall and two, we're gonna have to invest more money into it to convert it. Or am I just thinking too real world right you're, now? You're on the right track that converting the tower to more of a bar space will cost some money, obviously. Uh, as well as purchasing a license to sell liquor in this tower. <laughs> but it's a one time fee. And then, you know, we have Moscow's people making us residual money. My thing is just, do you, are we able to cut off in between floors? Because I don't want fucking random people being like, I'm going to go use your teleportation circle. I'm going to go get your shit out of the... You can uh, hire staff hands to stop people. But I mean, that's kind of the whole issue, regardless if we pick, if we decide to help them with the bar in general, we will always have the risk of there will be people in our space. Well, yeah, but in the bar, I'm not going to leave stuff there. If it was a house, just, I'm going to leave stuff <laughs> I'm just saying, and low, I'm, I'm just putting that out there. 
I mean, you could always ask the the Richards how they deal with it. Nobody knows they're down there. That's why. Then we just have to. It's make a it that secret way. for a reason. <laughs> then you're the rogue. We'll just make it secret. You can do that. Sure. Those aren't very reassuring. So it sounds like we're leaning towards the tower. I mean, we would still, ha if we did the tower, we would still have to redo the first floor to be the bar. And then again, like convert the second and third to like living quarter areas. One for Moscow's people, one for us. Um, I mean, realistically, we don't really have much else for storage if we wanted to store stuff. What I was going to ask is, where is the tower exactly? Because uh, if we're going to convert it to a bar, we need to put it in a place that people are actually going to walk by. Otherwise, we're wasting our time turning it into a bar. It Clever is, girl. It is further up towards the castle. There is less in terms of like drunken patrons here. So it is a bit of a toss up. You may get less people, but you'll probably get the more ritzy people who come up this way. So it's like a slow trickle of heavy money, but it it's you know it's up to you guys where you want to go. I'm I'm only giving you what you kind of assume. How much would it be to convert? That depends on your design. Uh, to purchase a license to sell liquor here, it's taverns come and go, so it's not that expensive. Essentially, it's about a four hundred dollar initial liquor license that allows you to do so for so many years. Um, and then when converting this space into a, more of a seating area, uh, obviously you have to buy furniture, and we'll work that out near the end, but I'll definitely say, like, let's go ahead and go to the, the tower map. There we go. Um, right now it's more of a comfort space, so definitely having to turn the uh, first floor more into like small seating spaces uh, like kind of like a speakeasy to have the, the small space we've, we've actually IRL been to where it's like a small bar area uh, making that into like the bar sort of takes the middle going from the top to the bottom and people can sit around it or or another idea still the same general template right but we make the first and second floor parts yeah. of the bar and then the the third and fourth everything above can be just like like the roof could be storage stuff and then i guess floors four and three could be like our living quarters second and first can be the bar and then the bottom part can be the secrets the secrets secrets I don't mind that idea. It'll cost a, a few thousand, you know, <laughs> to do this, but it can be done. Yeah. Um, Ugh, let's we're... go talk to Moscow first, and then we'll make a decision. Okay. Go to Moscow quickly. We'll once again, we'll fast forward that as he's only an hour away from his thing. Um, you guys are just coming in and out of my living space willy-nilly, aren't you? We love you. You have a moment? <laughs> I have an hour. Okay. Sit. Sits down. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like you're going to ask me for money. Um, oh, it's much worse. No, no, I mean, not necessarily. Savannah, I've known you a little longer now. Know that that means something else. <laughs> so, I have a business proposition for you. Oh, we're doing a we're doing a proposal. Okay. Oh, I think you'll like Wait, it. Wait, I think you'll like it. It's he right up your alley. Reaches out for the the coppered now cup and starts to pour him a bit of wine. I'm willing, especially from wait. you folks. Wait, wait, wait! Should you be drinking before your shift starts? I mean, Is yeah, I'm a bartender. In that case, give me that wine. I'll start drinking. <laughs> Pours himself more wine from the <laughs> copper cup. I don't tell you how to raid a dungeon. You don't tell me how to run a bar. Touche, sir. Oh, wasn't it that wasn't there that one time? <laughs> That's exactly what you tried to do. All right, well, I'll take that proposition. What if we own the bar? And I kind of unfold the paper in front of him. Oh shit! 
<laughs> what have you folks been doing? A lot. Don't worry about it. A lot of work. Don't worry about it. Too oh, many questions. I don't like him already. You know what? <laughs> I appreciate the stopping of questions. Rolly, have you not told him that his concoction is complete? Well, no. Did you tell him anything? Well... Listen, guys, I died twice, like, literally in the last few days, so if, like, if I could just have a moment to myself, that'd be great. Let's break this down from what you're saying out loud. First of all, uh, the potion's completed. You saw a djinn. Long yeah, story. Long <laughs> story. Too many questions. We'll Too get there questions. later. That's, All right. The, the point I'll, is I'll is fill you that. in. Don't worry. But it's done. It's done. Good to know. Uh, next, you have property now. It's kind of how we completed it. <laughs> our, our reward for completing it. All right. Hey, guess what? I just found out too. So we're on the same boat. <laughs> All right. Well, I will take I, you up on that offer for a drink, though. I, I, I can only do wine for now since I've sort of set it to that setting. But here, it, it's okay. No worries. Hands you a glass. Swig. Well, uh, if you're asking to be business partners, I don't think I can find anyone else who I would love to be business partners with. Hmm. It's more than business partners, though. Lovers? No. That <laughs> <laughs> interest slaps into her. Let, 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 let's, let, let's pull that train back from the station for a second. Listen, if you're going to be vague, I'm going to take every yeah, opportunity to make it Yeah, you didn't really give him a lot of... It's Moscow, and you're not giving him a lot of context, really. Uh, Moscow, I, I've nearly died twice in the last couple of days. You, it, I have bigger fish. That means you mean open. you need a refill. Pause that, your refill. That is... You are not wrong. And probably a long, long, long night. Mm. <laughs> you know what I need? I need a date. That's what I need. No, Moscow, I'm not talking about you. Damn, he's so quick Although now. I'm flattered. It was going to be a pity date, but fine. I'll take it anyway. Uh, so, it, it's more than just the business proposition. Um, you, just like us, we're basically family at this point, these two. I, I don't think I could ever imagine myself without them. They have just pounded and irritated and just ground up any frustrations I've had for such a long time now that they I can't... It's like Stockholm Syndrome. That sounds really. like family. Yeah. Yeah. You're welcome. Yeah. Uh-huh. I hate you guys so much, too. So much love right there. Takes well, out my axe. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> <laughs> well, uh... You certainly have my utmost trust. And... I want to see only the best from you all, and only your well-being. Great, now you're family. Shit. I mean, you guys were technically already family, but it's happy you finally acknowledged that. Yes, I'm growing. But more importantly, you two also have family. Yeah, which uh, brings me to something else, Moscow. You, you, we, we're going, we're speeding through this, right? I've only got so much time. After your shift, I need you to come with me because you're going to take a break. Come with you where? Huh? Home. <laughs> More elaborate, dear. My home. I plan on visiting uh, soon. It's fine. Not now. I'm Probably in like next month or two. Um, I don't think she's giving you a choice. Moscow. <laughs> yes? <laughs> Why does it terrify you to see your son? What do you think? <laughs> Listen. I, I, I'm, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go. Moscow. Yeah? Stop blubbering like a child. You're a man. <laughs> <clears throat> now listen. Well, I, loosely. I, <laughs> loosely. <laughs> when Still. I first met you, and I think other than Savannah, me and Rolly were on the same page, that your response to that whole situation was more than questionable. <laughs> but... But... You've helped us more than you know, and I truly do love you as my family. So I think it's time that you see your son. <sighs> Thank you for at least giving me uh, the option to tell my job. 
you're leaving and starting your own bar and you're gonna run off to go see your dead son? Are we doing that? Are we doing a bar? Yeah, that's, Where? A, that's a contingency. Oh. Look well, at I the mean, map. Well, we have options. There's one that's already preset, but we're all, but this tower, we I are mean, thinking about investing some ca capital into. I like the bar, it's already preset, but I will default to wherever you want me to work at. If you want me to work with you folks and do whatever, I'm excited to do so. Well, you're well, gonna kind of run it while we're not there. <laughs> Yeah. I, I can do that. I've been wanting to run my own bar for a while now. And then maybe... and you also have to be open to whatever we bring to the bar. Oh shit. Um. Okay. Can... And, and 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 then of course too. There's also the matter of now. We haven't quite told you everything. He knows a good chunk. Too many questions. <laughs> yeah. Just forget it. But, but yeah, of course, of course, of course. But maybe perhaps I'd feel a lot safer that you would know these things if you know there wasn't that you know let's just say that the, the no, most walls have eyes mm -hmm. well not these we'll cross that bridge when it comes to it then but i am willing to hear you guys out and definitely ellie right now you just notice this now vera she's like <laughs> Ellie is has a hand on your armor plate, looking over at what Savannah's still holding up, and is just like, like almost mouthing to Moscow, take it, take it, take it, take it, take it now, take it, take, take the- Dear, I can feel you. Sorry, dear. <laughs> don't, 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 don't worry, he will. Don't worry. He's like, all right, all right. Yeah, they're coming too. <laughs> well, yeah, we're not giving you a choice. She turned around, yes! Oh! <laughs> I'm like, we won't, we wouldn't leave you guys without employment. You're, you're what you're coming to. <laughs> oh, I can't wait to tell Luna. Hey, Luna can have her own little tarot thing. I think we thing. can just have her own setup where she can do her card readings. Well, so what we're going to do is that with an agreement with uh, <laughs> Moscow and his crew, you guys have your staff. There is no problem there. Uh, and we can work after uh, after hours uh, what your bar can look like and maybe wh how much it's going to cost. And the next session, we can introduce the people yeah. to your bar. So that's going to be very exciting. So what we're going to start doing now, guys, is... And of course, Moscow's going to agree to go with you, Vera. Mm -hmm. I got to also send a message. But you already know who I'm sending it to when he's not there. You send your message. <laughs> There's been a lot of talks offline. So what's gonna happen now is that we're gonna start doing a two week downtime. Part of that is you guys have given your instructions to Moscow and his crew. So he's essentially, uh, they're gonna quit their jobs. They're gonna start doing full time <laughs> to start to build up what you guys decide is gonna be. Um, your bar and your living space. Yeah. We'll decide all that offline. And so we'll introduce everyone to what you've chosen and what you built, how much it's gonna cost. Next session. Now we're going to do a two-week downtime, uh, which is very much needed for your, your players, or your characters. Uh, so let's go in order. Uh, one to two, Rolly. Three to four, Vera. Five to six, Savannah. Four. I believe that's Vera. I was like, who the hell was that? <laughs> <laughs> so, nice. Vera. Oh, no. Did I start uh, you, doing the thing? We're going to do part one, is you are traveling back. And by the way, I should mention this to the audience. When it comes to downtime, I allow our players to essentially fast travel to any city that they've already visited before. Um, so I assume you guys are traveling quickly to Marigar. Mm -hmm. uh, Moscow in tow. Mm-hmm. You've left uh, <laughs> Ellie and Luna to take care of the bar and sort of fix everything up there on that side, so they're gonna do your wishes. No problem. Uh, but they, you pull him aside, he's definitely begrudgingly going, <laughs> kind of, I know where we're going. Why are you so scared? I'm not scared. Then nervous? That's a good word. Why are you nervous? Probably because I haven't been down in the kingdom in a, quite a while. Are you in trouble? No. Well then. Well, first of all, I'm meeting your family. If they're anything like you. Oh, they're much more proper, but they're probably going to give you a side eye. Oh, great. 
makes me feel way better. And then we're You'll like to... my siblings. <sighs> All right. Kind of goes with you as you start to enter in once again this large canopy tree covered space of Merigar as these small orbs of light start to peer out uh, from the tree line itself. Uh, small pockets of light, of shining uh, sunlight, fill the space as you are back into the city of Merigar. Uh, wooden buildings everywhere as the, once again, the major, or the major spaces that are being, that catch your eye is the Season's Bounty, off in the middle of the actual, um, uh, no, more like northwest of the, uh, the city, the mayor's office, as well as the large forest areas uh, and farmlands that fill the space. Uh, where do you take Moscow? Inside. I'm looking for my brother to see if somebody else has arrived too. Alright. Uh, you walk into uh, the Season's Bounty, Moscow in tow. Uh, there is uh, your mother, who's currently running everything. Mm -hmm. uh, and you see that she's actually talking to your father, who's, a, who's uh, next, to the, uh, uh, next to the counter. And they're just sort of holding hands, talking to one another. They hear the, the door open. Vera, dear, come. Oh, uh, wait a minute. Brings you in. How have you been? Tired, but good to be home for a little bit. Uh, immediately, your father turns around. Welcome, sir. Um, if you'd like to take a job off of uh, the... Uh, I... yeah. This is Uthiel's father. This is Moscow Price. You can see a bit to your peripheral, uh, your sister... Uh, oh no. <laughs> Zoya, <laughs> who is currently like taking plates to the back. Uh, for the staff to clean like she's helping out where she can and she hears this she drops all the plates and goes holy shit Zulia <laughs> what <laughs> okay. Moscow turns mom's to you. gonna be really pissed that you just broke all her plates I don't give sorry mom uh, <laughs> starts to pick everything up <laughs> it's rude okay they to be fair they thought that Uthiel always had strictly human parents which Reminds me, uh, where's Bosun? <laughs> Your mother looks up, he's in his room. Uh, did he, t has my other visitor come yet? She's up there with him. Okay. Moscow? Um. What else do you have planned? I'll, I'll be right back. Be nice, everybody. Be nice. <laughs> And she goes, runs upstairs. You leave Moscow in the most awkward situation he can ever find himself in. You doesn't need a check at all. He's like, I love you. I love you. Be nice. Duh has no clue what to do, but you rush upstairs, open the door to where Vosen and your bedroom used to be. There you see Vosen currently sitting down next to the window pointing out a few of like the tree line and you do see Mary Kane who uh, is with him definitely like brushing herself off cleaning herself dear oh my goodness and reaches out to you and grabs you puts a head onto yours oh, it's been four it's been weeks oh, it's been months but <laughs> it's been a long time hey B. um don't curse on the way down, and Mary- You don't tell me what to do. Don't curse. Mom and dad are down there. Fuck that. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Why? What's happening? You'll What'd see. you do? I didn't do anything. I may have done a, a small thing. Mary, I need you to come with me real quick. You too, blue hair. Sure, of course. I do have a several weeks vacation now. I think I needed it. Yeah, you, you're, I think we all are gonna need it. You start to lead him downstairs. She's like, is it gonna be a surprise, a yeah, gift? Or and she's just like peeking down the stairs to see if Moscow's looking at her. Uh, no, you see currently Moscow talking to your father. Uh, and you don't, like, this fire genasi, uh, <laughs> if, if he could sweat, he's sweating. <laughs> and definitely like out of his element. And he's like reaching for his flask, or not his his mixer, and he like stops himself, and he's like, start to have just like sort of an outside conversation. And so she just she just says, "So Mary, 
And she just holds her hand and then walks her down. Come on. I will carry you down the stairs myself. I can do it. Starts to pull. <laughs> uh, your footsteps. You're not a quiet person. I normal. know. I'm in. <laughs> uh, definitely turns around and this fire genasi. These two people lock eyes, Mary Kane and, and Moscow. And Mary's already kind of a pale woman, just sort of turns ghost white, and so does Moscow, like a sort of a lighter orange now. Oh, this is great. <laughs> and you just see Moscow's the more, just sort of looks to you here and goes. <laughs> <laughs> Drinks. I'll go get the drinks. <laughs> I'll be right back. <laughs> I think your father and mother have caught on what you've done. <laughs> and it takes a moment for your sister to catch on. Who's definitely like, yeah, come on, Zoli, we're going to go get the drinks. It's broke all the frickin' plates. Let's go. Let's talk to your friend. He's got fire for hair. Zulia, for once in your life, focus. <laughs> we're getting the drinks. Alright, we're gonna drink with him. And starts to walk with you off to the back. Um, I think you can hear from the opposite end your brother going to Moscow and going, I know that look. <laughs> Let's have a seat. Uh, essentially, everyone sits down except for your mother and father. They're currently still busy working things. I think maybe your mother tells your father, like, you stay here. I'm talking to them now. <laughs> Definitely wants to get into the gossip. Uh, and you all sit down at a table, uh, surrounded by random strangers who are, once again, turning in their own adventuring capital, uh, staying here for the night, or not staying for the night, but like drinking for the day, uh, and doing their own thing. But you do have Mary, Zulia, um, or Z. Is Zulia. Zulia, uh, your mother, Moscow, uh, and, and yourself. And, 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 uh, yeah. And Can I do the thing brother. There? Well, you sit down. Okay. Uh, Mary looks to you. Vera dear. Uh-huh. <laughs> I know you're probably mad at me, but... I don't know. She looks to Moscow. <laughs> How have you been? Well, you know, um... Traveled around... Some good, some bad. Met these folks, or met her and her band. Went back to Alrak. And... Now I'm business partners. Oh yeah, I kind of neglected to say that part. Uh, that's it. Later. <laughs> and, um, how have you been? Oh, um, still working at the clinic. Um, doing what I can to help out. And there is like a moment of like, these two people who've been doing their best and they know each other kind of a bit of acknowledgement from both sides and kind of now like more of an awkward like all right do you want to talk more or <laughs> type of thing and you feel your brother uh most just leans on you uh mm -hmm. Viren goes i thought i was the shit but no you're a shit <laughs> <laughs> Wow! Huh? They're so cute. And I'm not a sh Okay, a little bit, but hey, you taught me. You're three years older. Then you see, uh, Zulia. Can I touch your hair? Zulia. Sure. <laughs> wow. I think Mom dropped that one. <laughs> she did not. Dude, I babysat And immediately, you. The, and your mother goes, I did not. <laughs> Are you sure? I think the, maybe there should be a new rule in this house. Vera? What? Respect. Well, maybe you don't take him to a Feywild as a baby, because she's the only one that came back like that. <laughs> you may now do what you wish, Vera. <laughs> oh, <laughs> no pressure. What are you doing as you start to do this action? Oh. Um. Oh, I thought I got it for a minute. <laughs> uh, she's probably like... She has her symbol, right? You do. You also have it tattooed. 
She's probably like twiddling it in her hands. Okay. But they can they can continue with conversation. <laughs> You got a two? Can mm -hmm. I see? Mm -hmm. I didn't roll that one, I rolled that one. Brutal. There's a big thing happening, guys. I'm gonna oh, cry and run away at the same God. time. Oh, <laughs> oh no. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> that's a two. No. Hey, Sam, I think it's about time we bail. <laughs> I mean, we're not even there. Oh, so. wait, she needs a shovel. <laughs> we are gonna put Zira on pause <laughs> as she uses divine intervention. Successfully. Successfully. <laughs> I rolled a two. Uh, Rolly. Hello. We're gonna jump to you. Hi. Uh, <laughs> where, I know you've, you mentioned a few things that you'd like to do. Uh, train, uh, make money as well as go on a date with Gina, and finally hang out with family. What would you like to do first? You know what? Um, Let's lock the easy stuff out the way. Let's go. Let's go visit my pops. See how he's doing. Perfect. Uh, we shift from this view of uh, the season's bounty to now we and, see it. and utter chaos and just <laughs> fucking chaos <laughs> happening within this room, shifting over to uh, a more humid-like uh, space as you are just surrounded by fields of green. Um, the temperature itself has dropped significantly, where it's now bearable. Still humidity. I mean, you're in a swamp land, you know, and you know it's it, you get what you get, but it definitely feels more like home. Uh, as you start to come up, the arch, these wooden archway of uh, sign upon it. This is the Barnwell Farm. Uh, you guys, or you enter, uh, Rolly, back home. The white uh, wooden uh, the farmhouse off into the center. Where you see fields of wheat and corn, uh, and of course, potatoes, as your family is known for. Best things ever. Best things ever. <laughs> um, Taters. <laughs> you do see off in the corner your brother, uh, Arad, who's currently raking something, and he sees you walk in. Where the fuck you been? Around. Yeah, you have. Uh, just visiting? Just swinging by, just real quick, saying hello. Got some business to take care of around here. Uh -huh. I'm, I am riding solo, so don't get any ideas. I never do. I don't believe you. Yeah, it's right to say so. Mm -hmm. Come on. Um, I think... Okay, well, I've got to prep you for a few things before we go inside. Oh, God, what happened? Father had a bit of a spill. Wait, he what? Uh, he's getting older. He insists to keep his office upstairs, and I told him not to. We have space downstairs. He went downstairs and had a bit of a spill. So he's bedridden right now. Um, but he's still he's still doing things, still doing the finances, but... Um, you know, of all the times to be writing solo, I could have really used some of that magic right about now. That's another uh, interesting point. Um, oh, God, no. Let's it's go inside. Than... Let's oh. go inside. Uh, mm -hmm. You walk into your familiar, uh, you know, living room and kitchen space, but often to the uh, corner uh, next to the fire space uh, or fire pit um, is your father, who is currently in like this makeshift couch bed um, with numerous pillows. He has a blanket over his legs, um, and he's currently like eating just like the small like snack space. Um, he sees you, sort of wipes his mouth. You see the the white, more white than pepper than he used to have uh, beard. Sort of, Rolly. Hey, Pops. How have you been, son? Well, it's been interesting. Um, um, what's this I hear about a spill, Pops? I'm fine. I just need some time to heal. Um, you know, Dad. I'm starting to really want to have you have your office downstairs. I'm fine. All of my records are upstairs. And you hear your brother tell going, tell him. Tell him, downstairs. tell him downstairs. Dad, uh, I have enough things to worry about 
out there. I don't want to worry about you. I don't want you to be hurt. I want you to be comfortable. Pops, you, you've done enough. And you're going to continue to do stuff for this family, of course. But why, why, why toy with anything? Let's just have you be downstairs. Just be more comfortable. You see, like, the, the immediate see, like, this, like, look of defeat, and just... Alright. Alright. We have a back room. I'll move my office down there. I'll have... I'll have A-Rad do that. And you see A-Rad, like, just sort of smile and, like, give you a pat on the back. I'll do it. I just need his... Yeah, you gotta stop being stubborn, Dad. You know? We can take care of things now. It's like, you know, Dad, you spent, uh... You spent a lot of time taking care of Arad, you know, rehabbing him and making him into the... somewhat outstanding gentleman that he is now. Functional is a word. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, you know... Let, let, let him ha let, you know... Let us help you. Kind of like your father of very little words, you know, definitely like nods and sort of strikes his beard and gives you like the wave of okay. You've seen this as a child and especially as a teenager of like you wanted to do something instead of saying yes, he just sort of gives you this like do what you want, you have my blessing, and sort of um, leans back and just, just is still healing from, from his ordeal. Um, you do hear. From the upstairs, and finally you see uh, your brother Cat as he comes down. Rolly, what up, little guy? Hey, oh my God, I gotta show you something. Wait, 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 wait. We could save that stuff for later. Right now, I want to know how you've been. Fine, fine. Mm -hmm. um, been doing good around the house. Yeah, I, I, I've, I, uh, I, I helped uh, Arad with the fields, and I, I told him how to help me. Um, our pigs gave birth, so we have more piglets now. Um, oh, good. I told him how to do that, and, you know, we're learning that. Um, I, no, check this out. Check it. And he brings out the book that was given to him, and the, the one that was bought from you guys. And I finally got it. I got... He flicks it, and you see four little orbs. And flicks it upwards, and... And almost like he's juggling them. Not bad. Not bad. Impressive. I think only you, Rolly, would catch this, but they do have a tint of red to it, and kind of clicks. Proud of you. I am proud of you. You look like you got bigger. Yeah, I've been through a lot. Hey, Red's like, yeah, you look... Dude, stop growing, alright? Uh, I... I can't control it. No, we want me to do. Uh, I, I think at this point you see that since Arad has not had a drink in such a long time, he's actually lost lost a bit of that gut that he's had. He still has the beer gut, you know? Like, he's been sort of the bigger fellow uh, out of the family. Like, he's definitely ready to rumble, but and has some muscle, but definitely has, like, the gut above it. It's losing. It's going a little lower. I'm going to actually mention, like, hey... You know, Arad, you look a lot different than the guy I used to pick up in those alleys. Not bad. I'm impressed. I'm happy for you. Thanks. Uh, food's tasting better, and I, I'm not losing hours. Which is, I think, the, the best thing. And um, Do you want to help me out in the field? I got some time. Uh, you spend some time with your family, uh, digging into the dirt with your fingertips, just this old feeling of going back to the soil where you grew up at. And you help with the harvest, the crops, especially now that autumn is trying to turn more into a crisp winter as season starts to change. Um, 
he, uh, A-Rad, your brother, does bring you to the back where you do see a decrepit-like shed, uh, and he does want your help to help, you know, to build it up. So I want you to make me a athletics roll. Do, 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 do. Uh, that is going to be 16. 16. Uh, with the help of A-Rad, you start to pick up a lot of these, like, freshly delivered uh, planks of wood, start to rip out a lot of the old, you know, rotted out, you know, wood pieces and start to build back up this shed. Um, it starts to slowly come together and A-Rad looks to you as you're currently mid, you know, pounding sort of nails into wood to make sure that thing's stable. Uh, stable. So, um... I've been dating Liz, Lizzie. You know the 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 guard. Yeah. Is she still guarding here? No, they're they're apparently the 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 time here was only for a, a month, and it's been past that. So. <sighs> Off the clock. You know, you you couldn't do this like before. I didn't know it before. Know? I mean, you couldn't have set all this up before. You know, talking to her is okay, but you know, not that other stuff. I mean, hey, there's not a lot of people I don't know from outside the town, so I kind of went for it. Yeah, fair enough. Fair enough. All right. Yeah. And he hands you a piece well, of wood, and you start to, especially with your height, start to get the uh, the the roof. It's like oh, I'm happy for you, as long as uh, you know, you're happy with her, and she treats you right. You treat her right. You treat her right. You. All right. Damn. Like sometimes I wonder if you're the older brother. Well, I mean, you did lose a couple of years. Yeah. So. Uh, how is your adventuring going? Can I trust you? The family, yeah. I mean, for dad, can I trust you? Oh. Because it would be nice to talk about some stuff, but I don't want to worry him more than... I don't want to put any more burden on him. He's... Yeah, he's, he's getting older in age. No, I, I'm, I'm not going to worry him. I've died. He kind of like drops his hammer and he's like, shit, picks it back up. Twice. You died. Kind of looks at, she don't look like it. Well, let's just say I've got some very capable companions. I've seen it, the other side. And hopefully one day when I can stay here for a little bit more than a couple of days, I'll tell you all about it. But um, I think it's all been worth it. And I pull out the vial. I forgot about it. <laughs> uh, he looks at it and it's like, some magic dealy? What is that? Do you open it? No. No? No. I, I, the reason why I'm not opening it is because uh, I, it, I'm, meta, I'm metaing this, but uh, Roly forgot uh, like how, if, if it's supposed to, how it's supposed to be taken. So he wants to go back to Moscow and confirm before he comes back to administer it to everybody. <laughs> but yeah, let's just say like, like, look, I'm not 100% sure how it's going to do its thing, but let's just say I went through lot of trouble okay um and, and yeah this is it we'll come back to you then and we'll say that during this like brief transition you to speak to moscow and sort of like what do we do with this again and it's easier this time since he is in Vrivan. Uh, oh no mary gar sorry mary gar yeah uh but switching what? over Oh, sorry, go on. Yeah. <laughs> no, I was gonna say, what do I do with this? <laughs> uh, watch her, watch switching her. over to Savannah, 
Uh, Savannah, you have three things that you like to do. You'd have a moment with a raven's kiss, uh, something to make money, as well as family. Let's rip this band-aid off. Time to go home. All right. Well, we will reconvene with Savannah and her family when we come back from break. See you guys in 10. ka -ching.
Hey everyone, we are back. Uh, we are now returning to our little downtime moments here as we join Savannah. Let me put the right background for this. Uh, it would be. Yeah. There we go. Yeah. We see uh, as the. The, uh, the picturesque scene of two individuals working outside in a farm, putting up a shed, starts to change as we now see uh, the outside of a forest. Um, Savannah, you've traveled down a road that you have not traveled with your companions at all, uh, going towards what is more or less a like a like a like a like a log town where a lot of like the buildings are made of uh, like heavy like like logs like cabins uh made from the surrounding forest that is thick um you know to head straight south uh east through these numerous thick tree lines that really need common grace um and sort of agile uh, ability to go even past which is something within your own nature starting to go from tree to tree, jumping over where you see there's very little ground as most of it is just growing up from tree lines. Uh, finally, you come to a point after half a day's travel to a circled out clearing with numerous spikes and, uh, and wooden pikes uh, sticking outwards to deter anyone who is going to come across this space. But you, who know that it takes an agile climber to get into the clan space go up a tree about 20 feet jumping over and landing into the clearing uh, what we see now is numerous uh, tents uh, made of like hide and leather surrounded by numerous trees that reach up high into the sky that have numerous like wooden buildings created inside um, each of the tents have small dangling ornaments and toys and uh, just small figurines that decorate the space and in the middle of this clearing is a small fire pit right now what our view sees is numerous tabaxi kind everywhere different uh colorations of fur uh different coats um there is a bit of a <gasps> gasp as you land uh into the space but they go about their day seeing that you are one of their your own kind um, you do get some side eyes of people who do recognize you, and there is a bit of talks happening as they're... Savannah? Savannah. And... From that whisper, you hear... What?! <laughs> and you oh, recognize no. the yell as it is your mother, uh, as she comes out of her tent, your home tent, and she pulls out a hand out for you, runs you, and you see this older uh, tabaxi woman. Uh, looks fairly similar to Savannah, almost like if she was gonna age about 20 to 30 years. Uh, walks over to you, grabs underneath your chin, and goes, Savannah, what have you been? Hey, Mom. Uh, then, her nails start to dig in a bit and mom, goes, Mom, Mom. <laughs> you are gonna give your old mother quite a fright. You're gonna give me a heart attack. I try to take her claws off my face. No. <laughs> mom, no, little mom, kitten. I'm... You're not gonna get away from me this time. Mom, I'm okay. Let's go. Uh, <sighs> at that point, roll me a perception check. That is going to be a 22. 22. You see your little brother, Arthur, and your little sister, Mia, who are now at this point, Mia's about 16, uh, while Arthur's about 11. Um, they are trying to creep behind you, but they don't notice that you noticed. That's so interesting. The wind feels so, and I just hop around and catch my heavy. You get, you do that, and Arthur immediately drops backwards. Is like, uh, and there is something different about Arthur where he's wearing what looks like to be like a makeshift eye patch. Clearly doesn't need it, but has it. Um, and he's like, he's got like a wooden sword and everything. Mia, on the other hand, like, 
goes into like attack, not attack mode, but like matches your, your form and kind of smiles. Practicing. I have, I have, I have been practicing. Uh, well, I mean, with you gone, I've been hunting. We're going to talk about this. I want to know what you caught. Arthur! Uh, Arthur jumps up, pulls the sword and forces and goes, Arr! I'm going to be a pirate. <laughs> I was on a boat. You were on a boat? And I learned so much. I learned how to steer. You got to show me. You gotta show, and then the mother, like, immediately your mother, um, whose name immediately escapes me. Anika. I gotta pull up my loves too. <laughs> yeah, I have your, I, oh my goodness, how could I? Anika. I, Anika. Yeah, there it is, Anika. Uh, this one wants to go on C. Mom, I'll explain. I just go back to Arthur, I'm like, you know what pirates like, though? What? treasure and I go in my bag and now you guys understand I pull out the silver spoons <laughs> you got treasure I have treasure uh, and I go on I was like, I'm like please Mr. Pirate don't hurt me and I hand him to Arthur <laughs> he starts to grab it all and just wow it looks to Mia who just like <laughs> looks at it closely he's like some of that's really expensive this has been a lot of places <laughs> uh you hear the stomps uh of heavy foot uh behind you um not being stealthy at all and you do see uh the figure of atlas um the clan oh, no. leader this essentially of the of the spotted back um sylvana scuda it just beats some time. Demeanor change, and now it's the uh, actual respectful. I actually turn to face Atlas. And like, Sir? Your mother has been very worried. Uh, I can explain? Do not explain to me. Explain to your mother. I will talk to mother, but Noah kind of knew. <laughs> Kind of like analyzes you for a second. Go on. Actually, is there a possibility I can speak with you later? I met your daughter on the road, and I on the road, by the way. He kind of like gives a half-hearted smile, and then sort of nods his head and like downwards, and looks over his shoulder. And you see next to the fire pit. Um, is the very familiar figure of Jensi, who is kind of like hearing all this commotion finally and like turns and sees you and goes, Savannah! I just kind of run to hug her. I'm like, I'm so glad to see you're safe. Yeah, I'm safe. Where did you go when you left? Um, a couple of places. I just actually left Moscow though. They're oh, all safe. That's as good Trust to hear. Me, they're all good. We we will talk. <laughs> I know they went to. Well, they were said they were traveling to Alrak. Are they still there? Yes, they're. That's where we left them. Uh, you hear immediately at the the mention of Alrak, your mother swings around. You went east. You went east. Mom grabs your uh, ear. Um, mom, mom. I told you there was one rule that you had, and that was not to go east. Mom, mom, mom. Okay, can we go to the tent? Yeah, we're going to the tent right now. I'm keeping you Ow. there. Well. Brings you over to the to the tent. Um, there, sitting uh, within the tent, uh, is uh, your brother Noah, who is sitting down, like sort of stirring a pot within a small fire inside of the tent. And then sees you and goes, "So the prodigal daughter arrives." Tell them. Mother, let go of her. You haven't seen her in forever. She lets you go. Uh, as you sit down next to Noah, he kind of whispers towards you. Have you seen Sheba? No, 
I haven't seen anybody I with she, reason. I thought she was gonna be with you. I know you like what? to venture out to, towards the Coda, and I thought she was there with you. Wait, you haven't seen her? I've been looking. How long has she been missing? A few months now. My face just dropped. Um, I look around and make sure none of the kids are in the tent. They're currently playing like pirates. As uh, you see, the Mia's kind of like uh, begrudgingly. She's a teenager now, so she's begrudgingly playing with Arthur and just like, "Oh yeah, Ar you've got a lot of treasure now." <laughs> but definitely, like they, she's keeping him company. Uh, your mother walks over to where the food is as he. Or, you know, uh, Noah kind of brings you to the side. You're staying for your dinner, yeah? Yes, mother. That is good to hear. Noah brings you to the side, so you finally have a bit of privacy. What? Noah, I was kidnapped. That's why I haven't been home. I didn't want to bring that back here until I knew. He immediately grabs your shoulders and is like, Goodness. Gives you like a, the biggest hug that he can. I'm fine, I'm fine. Don't. What happened? I don't know. I was at the Raven's Kiss. I just finished a job trying to get work. I was heading back and me be me. I a gnome stopped me and it's offering money to try a drink. So I tried the drink. Next thing I knew, I was in the back of the wagon. I escaped in, in, in Clearing City, and it's just been a whirlwind ever since. Wow. But now you're telling me she was missing. Yeah. I don't... Um. Tell, you need to tell me more. She left about perhaps two weeks? After we stopped hearing word from you, and I don't know where she's gone. I thought she went with you, and I knew where you were working at. I'm sorry, Raven's Kiss? The bar? I thought that was... that's the name of it? In character, he doesn't know anything about the guild. But he will... It's a nickname. It's a nickname. It's a nickname. Don't worry about it. Oh, okay. Uh, well, I, I thought she was there at the Raven's Kiss with you. Um, but they kind of didn't appreciate my constant badgering, I suppose. I did go a little overboard. But, yeah. I haven't seen her. Um... Um, that's worrisome. Don't tell Mother. Yep. Make something up. She doesn't know? She knows that she's been away at a very business, a very busy and time-consuming job. Does Atlas know? Atlas does not know. Only I. <sighs> Noah, people have been going missing. I don't know how much I want to tell you because I don't want you guys to worry more, but we need to find her or at least find out where she might have went. I'll, I'll continue searching. I'll have some runner jobs to go on, and um, I've already searched Dakota and Six Run. I'll, Mother doesn't like us going west, I mean east, but I'll give it a shot. I mean, you know what? We're not many tabaxis, um, someone had to see her. That's a good point. At this point, uh, you hear the familiar sound of a, a, a ladle hitting a pot. Everyone sit down! Our daughter has come back! So we're going to eat as a family! Very, very abrupt. <laughs> sits you down. Um, Mike's face you, was great. You enjoy, uh, <laughs> yeah, you enjoy a, a, a nice, more calm now that 
she has you sitting here from your mother. Um, dinner. Sitting with your family, definitely the rebunctious tabaxis that they are. Uh, and of course, Arthur being a little more uh, excited to see uh, his older sister. Um, we can definitely say after some time, uh, you finish your meal and you can go see Atlas. Um, yeah, I'll put my bowl down and it's like, I'm gonna go speak with Atlas. I will be back, mother. At least send word when you were going out on missions or for weeks, you at least send a letter. I will be here for the night. I will leave in the morning for, th for business, but I will be here tonight. <laughs> As long slaps you, not like not hard, but like lightly. Like, as long you are safe. And I I'm like gonna. It. I'm, My worldly hates that. And <laughs> I'm going to, I'm going to pack you some food. That way you always Mom. have something. No, no, no. There is no. There's no agreeing here. I mean, no argument. You're getting food. Yes, mother. That is right. Yes, mother. And uh, <laughs> you can out walk out. <laughs> um, Atlas, as you know, usually has a station here, sort of near the the northern side, where the city of Lulan, and uh, sort of the direction going southward. So he stands sort of northwards to keep eye. Um, the sound of your footsteps definitely heard by him as he turns, sees you. I like knock on the pole of the tent. Miss Grilla, how have you been? Busy. Can I ask? Some, may I ask some questions, if possible? I'm just trying to understand some things, and you might have no, more knowledge about it. I will tell you what I know. How much do you know outside of our clan, like world, worldly life wise? I know enough. What exactly are you looking for? Liz, I didn't just leave. I disappeared. Hmm. No and I'm trying to understand who may be doing this, but I'm trying to also keep the clan, the clan away from it as a whole. Which is why I did not send word. Hmm. Your mother definitely was worried, but we kept on ensuring her that you are a capable runner. I am so a you, capable runner. So you are going to be fine. And this proves it. The fact that you disappeared can mean a numerous number of things, but I can only assume that it means negative. So, I'm happy that you were able to find yourself out of this negative situation. I appreciate your concern for the clan and not bringing anything further down to us. We already have plenty of other things to worry about. Have you ever heard of the Stripe Leg? In my head, out of character, is that the other tabaxi? I think I've encountered one. There is a reason why we do not do jobs in the east. This is where the straight leg are. They see our clan as a blight. They see us all in uniforms if they wash, if they wish. Looking directly underneath the domain, and it's ever changing leader. But the spotted back were founded on the principle that you are free to choose and to do as you wish, not to have your job and your position put upon you. Not forced to be in some sort of pseudo military group. That's why she's worried. That's what I know about the outside, is that if you have skills, someone will try to use you for them. 
which is why we stay here. When was the last time you had any contact with the squatted back clan? Not in my lifetime. Our ancestors, though. It's been quite some time. Was there just a... Obviously a difference in opinion, but was there a spot? On their side. When our clans came in contact. If you didn't know, I, the spotted back came from... From more of the eastern side. So western. Western side of the continent. They came from the east. When we started to expand and find places to live, records show that we met with them and they disapproved of our methods. Subterfuge, something apparently they see, they look down upon. It's not our ways. We're not loud and bombastic. We're not ones to cause a scene. No, we're not ones to work with military groups. Sorry. Anything else on your mind? You said military groups is just in general, um, as in for the domain? For either. We're not soldiers. I know we are not, but it's it's just so odd. Why tabaxis? <sighs> Our kind is known for many things. We are quick-footed, agile, um, and a lot of our biology offers us many utility for spies. Uh, military spies, to be more specific, uh, and scouts. We choose to use these natural gifts for our own well-being, and not for any political party. We will not be used. One more thing, Atlas. We... There is a woman who goes by the name of Lily Underwood. She's a soldier from the kingdom. Hmm. Do you recognize that name? We had a family member do a job within six run. I believe he's heard of that. He kind of starts to go through like a ledger. Uh, and you recognize this as sort of like the clan's ledger of keeping track of where you guys are going to make sure that if anything happens they can go see you. It's kind of why your brother went to Akota to look for you. It's because like, oh, mm -hmm. that's where she was last seen. Um, and uh, goes through a few notes and notices like, you know, sort of things that are happening within town. Sort of things that you guys keep up with just to make sure if you need to stop going to a particular town or if this is a gold mine, we should start going here more often. Uh, apparently there was kingdom general in the domain. Something interesting. How long ago? Couple weeks. We haven't gone there since, so we're not sure if she visited recently. For now, under no circumstances, do no bis business for that woman or around that woman. Hmm. I don't have the full story of what happened to me, but she is very much involved and has tried to have me killed several times. For now, she thinks I'm Catherine. Understood. But there are not many tabaxis in this world. She might figure out this where I actually come from. I tell you this mostly if you have to run, run. Understood. 
there's like that moment of processing, uh, especially going through his stoic face, just sort of this. And for those who don't know, uh, Atlas is this like jaguar like coloration of a tabaxi, strong jaw, uh, bright yellow eyes, and just a full black coat uh, with a little bit of white tuff uh, near the neck. Mm. Oh, just a. Starts to write it in. In the ledger, does it say where Sheba was last sent? Sheba. Let me go back to my map. Sheba took a job. Uh, she was in the middle between Akota and Six Run. Oh, is, we just know somewhere in the middle? Mm hmm. Small farming village. And start to go through the ledger. Needed, uh. Individuals needed help uh, delivering a package. Do you have any more information? She was supposed to go into the middle of this sort of cross section of a, of a city. Uh, or small farming town uh, and deliver the package somewhere in Aerofield. It. <laughs> that was the destination. <clears throat> Thank you. Of course. I go back to the tent. <laughs> Uh, is there anything else you'd like to do with your family? Um, probably we'll stay up talking to Mia so she can tell me all about her fun hunting. <laughs> she tells you that she's gone hunting. She's killed so many, like, and she kind of, like, exaggerates, like, these giant vulture birds that were, like, accosting the village at one point. She was the savior of the day. Uh, and definitely Noah uh, is, like, kind of... Not really, but kinda. Um, and she does hold that with pride. Um, she's killed a dire wolf on her own, and she does show you the pelt to prove it. Yeah, and I'm it's... impressed. It took three of us to kill one. I set traps. Smart girl. It got wounded, and I found the opportunity. And they definitely talk to you, trying to learn as much as they can of the adventures you've gone on. Uh, I tell them about my gladiator friend and my friend whose hair changes of many colors. <laughs> right away, uh, yeah, they're, they're just engrossed in this story, especially the younger ones. There's even a particular point where you're getting into your, your tales that even your mother stops bickering and just starts to sit back and listen. So there's definitely a bit of a pride. You know that your clan, especially your family, whenever there's something accomplished, it's shared. It's a story to be shared, and there is pr pride in finishing and accomplishing these things. And uh, definitely a, a proud mother look coming from uh, from your parent. But uh, we see this starting to fade as we go back to a familiar scene uh, back at uh, the city of Merigar, back to you, Vera. It's been a night after drinking and discussing an awkward wordplay from both, you know, from all parties. I feel like there's probably a lot of alcohol consumed in this house. <laughs> oh, yeah. There's even a point where Moscow, he starts to essentially make liquor drinks for, uh, for your family and is definitely doing the showy uh, fire genasi. You've seen him back in Glixen Beach and he's like, <laughs> This one, Nicole, <sighs> looks to you, Vera. New season. Ha ha. <laughs> I'm glad you're laughing. <laughs> starts to pour like this pearlescent liquid uh, and tops it off with the cherry in each one. Starts to give it to each of your family member and like, wait, wait. Is your sister, your elves, what am I talking about? She shouldn't, but she can. <laughs> but uh, it is now morning as you wake up. No pressure. Now, uh, give me a scene. Yeah.
Oh, my turn? You wake up. What do you do? Okay. <laughs> I was like, oh, my turn. Um, nice. She will get Mary and uh, Moscow and and Mosin, because it's the person she trusts the most amongst them, and uh, lead them out to the garden. Uh, it's probably sun is barely coming up. There are small pockets of sun that is hitting different parts of this area, giving it a nice, illuminescent uh, reflection and glow. Um, while there, you bring him to a mounted over patch of just beautiful wildflower flowers that fill the space. Um, there is a heavy weight as you come into the space. Definitely, Mary and Moscow, who have never been to this section of the city and don't know what's underneath it, there is a complete understanding the moment that you and Vosin walk towards it and it's a somber feeling where they kind of it clicks yeah and you see as Mary is the one to do it where she grabs onto Moscow's hand and they just sort of stare down at this, the grave and um, there is no words She's, she's not in her armor at this time. She's probably, like, in a regular whatever she has left in her room <laughs> dress. So she doesn't have all that garb on except for her symbol. So she'll go out... Because there's, like, a little, like, river or lake or something. There's, like, a body of water there, there right? There is, yeah. Okay. So she'll probably go out. And she's been twiddling her freaking symbol so many times. And she's like, I need you to do one... <sighs> The favor that I've been asking for. You're talking to. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. And she's like, because I need his light to end this and to balance it. And she just probably, instead of like ice, she probably just goes stark gold and her eyes flash. And in that process, she's going to cast Guardian of Faith because she's going to need some muscle to help bring him up. You look up to the sun, the small sliver of sunbeams coming down. They start to bend. The beam mid-air move and they to this point where you are standing start to slowly illuminate you as you start to turn stark gold. Your hair turn a bright golden color. You don't see what the others are doing, but they are definitely having direct eyes on you. As you step backwards, the light itself starts to manifest as these small sprinkles of dust and glint. So finally it starts to build um, the same guardian that you summoned before back in Mirabite. As he golden armor, helmet downwards, holding a spear at the ready. Uh, a large symbol of Paylor on the chest of this guardian as it <sighs> goes down on one knee and looks up to you, uh, Vera. She's just gonna look down and ask, bring him back to me. As you wish. Stands up, lets go of the spear that <sighs> turns into a giant like sun symbol mm -hmm. holds it out and all the light starts to come this this whirling circlet of gold this bright light and part of the dirt around it the flowers themselves are being plucked outwards and getting caught up in this circlet of this tornado of magical aura this divine light as the dirt starts to evaporate and disperse so finally there is a wrapped clean, a white clean wrapped body that starts to get caught in this light. The divine, the spiritual guardian that you've summoned reaches out We are only servants of the light and yours shall be Re lit, and as the word escapes his voice, it echoes throughout the entire valley. 
almost like an entire hush across the entire city as this wrapped figure starts to, the wrappings starts to release, landing on his knees, looking up, glossed over white eyes that start to return coloration back to the skin. You've used divine, uh, divine intervention. Statistically now you can, or ability, you know, the, the restrictions, you cannot do it for the next seven days. Yeah. However, the light escapes, the guardian almost grabs the light and puts it back into the body. Looks to you, Vera. Servants of light. You have done our Lord good. And for that, you deserve a bright beacon. A torch within the darkness, something else that you desire. And he has allowed it. Thank you. And she just bows. The spell cracks and dissipates as he goes back into the light. The lights start to return back to their normal spots. And there, you see, finally taking a breath after so many months, and after all turmoil and experience and <sighs> travels, Uthiel Cain opens his eyes, and the first words out of his voice Rough as it may be. <laughs> I found you. Kind of <laughs> talks uh, over. She, she's gonna go run over and get the cloak from from Bose. <laughs> Gives you the coat immediately, not even thinking. Mary jumps in with you and just grabs both of you and just starts to cry. <laughs> and is just tears of just pure joy that her son is back and that you brought him back promise is a promise <sighs> Moscow now you could be terrified because now you could meet him in flesh and blood <laughs> you hear from the back <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> I mean, excuse me, literally, excuse me as I say that. This is not the moment to say it, but what the fuck? With your... <sighs> she just kind of puts her hands on his face. I have a question for you. Yeah. Will you marry me this time? Of course. Just leans on you, grabs you. Oh, I forgot how heavy you are. <laughs> what is the... Oh no, you didn't use the spell, so this is the thing where you're fine. Yeah, the resurrection is where I'm tapped. He finally finds his footing, definitely a bit weak in the knees. Listen, no help. Yeah, yeah of course. Grabs on Come on, big guy. <sighs> how was your nap? He looks at you. You're, you haven't changed a bit. As they start to go up, and he sees the fire genasi standing there. Friend of yours? Mm, family. Hi. And he's like, you know, Uthiel, there is no moment he doesn't yeah. want to say hello and be the nice person of the group. He reaches out a hand to Moscow, and Moscow is like, Handsome. Drops the drops the mixer. <laughs> I've let me get him. Puts a shoulder over him and carries Uthiel to wherever you want to bring him to. Inside the house to give my parents yet another heart attack, but they were forewarned that this would be a possibility. So, like, are you just trying to get of everyone heart attacks right now? <laughs> Jesus! I'm like, you had the family trap moment, now you're raising the dead. Like, god damn it, Vera. Uh, we have questions. <laughs> Seriously. 
So At this point, Rolly uh, is seen coming back, trying to get to Moscow. I'll be like, what does this thing do? <laughs> it just looks like literally almost dropped the bottle. Like, what the shit? He's like, Rolly what? walks to the door, just like, what the fuck? What the we'll what? We're going to have that. Yeah, we're going to have that. We're going to have Because you guys, you said it. You wanted to go back to Moscow to learn. <laughs> so it's going to happen. The moment, Vera, you bring every, this entire party, including Uviel, back to the season's bounty. Um, She's your gonna mother, whatever she was doing. She dropped more plates. We're going to need new plates. No, your mother. <laughs> no. Cyrus? <laughs> Cy Cyrus! <laughs> By the way, what's going on, chat? Mom. Uh, your father coming downstairs. What's happening now? We're closed. We're closed. <laughs> Everyone out. <laughs> we are closed. And everyone, this random patrons of the season's bounty starts to get up and is ushered out very excitedly by your sister, <laughs> who's like, <laughs> everyone out! That face was great. Everyone what? out! You, stop eating your food! He's like, grabs the food, he's like, no, Throws give me your drink, too. you're out too. <laughs> out, 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 and starts to uh, rush everyone like, out. Yeah. At this point, she's gonna Rolly walks in. <laughs> <laughs> As your the Zulius looks to you, Rolling goes, "No, we're not accepting." Come on in, <laughs> brings you in. And she will all go up to Rolling. Oh, just gives yate. <laughs> Did I miss something? Rolly. I want to officially introduce you to Uthiel Kane. And she'll just kind of gently gesture uh... to Bosun and Moscow, holding him up. <laughs> Wait, I thought he was. What did you do? God's work. What did you do? God's work in mysterious ways, and I What did help. you do? Uh, Uthiel looks at you, Rolly. He's Hi, Rolly. A... You've met before, just in different <sighs> circumstances. Thank you. What the sh- Fuck! <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I'm gonna get that for a while. Yeah. Yeah. You will. Dad! You were- and I saw you and- But- You were dead. Yeah. You both have had interesting tales that I'm sure you could relate to. But sh long and short of it is, I've had the opportunity to bring you both back. Witchcraft! <laughs> witchcraft! Witch! <laughs> She's a witch! <laughs> uh... <laughs> We are going to say that uh, you guys, for a day, process all of this information. Yeah. Definitely your mother and father are <laughs> dumbfounded at this display of divine energy to bring back Uthiel Cain. The entire time, Maria has not left his side and is just like doing the motherly, like, stroking his hand and like dusting him off and like i have to clean you i have to do something i i want to be useful like just like and then like instinct kicks in as like a like a mother just starts to like clean the ear all right mom that's but Uthiel's entire attention is just locked onto you bear and there's some brief moments where the discussion of Moscow hasn't fully been fleshed out. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, he's not indifferent. Like he's not angry. Like he's just like. I feel you're. Yeah. I don't even know how to describe your dad. <laughs> but I love him as my own, and I hope that in time you will do the same. He is very different from you. <laughs> But his heart is just as good. Uh, Moscow puts an arm over with you and is like, Yeah, um, <laughs> does he drink? Do you drink? He drinks. <laughs> we should have a drink. 
simple as that. And um, can I have one too? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I think we all need one. <laughs> I feel like we all. Does everyone want one? And even Mary's like, I would like two. Yeah. I'm with her. By the way, you what look the way shit? Uh, really, you look way better. Look at the patches are gone. The uh, Moscow. <laughs> Like, this is Mary telling you this, Rolly. Really, she's like, she's the one first examined you. And it's like, it's all gone. <laughs> I point to Moscow. <laughs> Let's get some drinks. She will ask one question before. I don't know when we're switching, but before we, we switch. Sure. She will ask her dad. Um, I'd like for you to officially give me away this time before I go off and fix whatever the hell I have to fix. If you don't mind. All right. We'll do on your next one. If you want to bring also Savannah in, you can definitely yeah. say you sent a message. Everyone's <laughs> together. We'll have that as a thing. Okay. Uh, so a few breaking down points of what's happening with this whole reunion. One, Marion Moscow have a few moments alone to discuss things. So many things. <laughs> a, lot of things. a lot of things. A lot of things. <laughs> Secondly, uh, Moscow and Uthiel have some moments alone to discuss a, a lot, lot of things. things. <laughs> and then finally, they all have you together, Vera, as well, to discuss a lot of things. Yep. Too many. Yep. God damn it, Vera. <laughs> what Vera the hell did you do? Amber was busy during her downtime going... <laughs> broke the game. Figuratively thinking out how I'm going to make the most out of this downtime. In addition to I that... Mean, I know you want to get married, but fuck... <laughs> Oh, she has a reason why, but like, she's will probably roleplay that moment, and then you will figure out why she wants to hurry up and do that. So the divine intervention was one, as well as the meeting with Moscow and Mary. You, as a player, was also asked you wanted to either reconnect with your god or do some training. It is either or. This is number two in terms of the circle we're doing. Okay. What would you like to do? I will reconnect because I guess that will lead into the reason why I'm getting married. I would like you to make me so this is what you're as you go to a multi-church and sort of discuss it with one of the uh, religious folks that are currently here um, you have a task okay I would like you to out of five tries give me three ways you're going to help the community here in Marygar I will judge you on a few things either Complete success, needs an additional thing, or not enough. How many things? Three. Three. Out of five. All right. I have, well, from being from there, I would ask what, because oh, Amber don't know, Amber, <laughs> what are, like, probably the most neediest areas? No, no, we're not going to do this thing. You were going to give me what oh, like you just can, ideas? just g general ideas. What could you do to help the community with your abilities? Mm, magic or just just anything anything is if it's something small like feeding people or if it's like building something or using magic to do something all all game building something's a thing she will she will build a center so to speak as an extension from um the season's bounty is giving back to the community for anybody that needs sanctuary or food or just a safe place to be passing through or from the community. Kind of like an extension soup kitchen type of thing? Yeah, she will do that in the sense of she knows what it's like to kind of sleep out in the dirt now. <laughs> she also knows what it's like to be hungry and she does not want that for the place she's from. So there has to be a safe spot. Roll me an athletics check with advantage since uh, your brother will definitely help you. <laughs> Don't roll a two. I know. I don't know. I need to see my modifier. Does it go up? Because I haven't leveled myself. Would it go up for ten? Maybe. Up ten. Uh, proficiency bonus at ten. No, it stays at plus four. So. Well, I have a plus three, so that's plus four then? No, I, I think you're not proficient with it, are you? No. No, so no, it's still plus three. That's not too bad. 16? 16. Uh, it takes a few tries, but I will definitely count this as a success. So that's one. Okay. 
Okay. I gotta think of two other things. Two more things. I'm trying to think of what's in this area. Has a church. Has a planner place for safety. How are you helping the community? Small or big? Hmm. She didn't think they're this far. <laughs> So this is number two because we're running a cycle. So you gotta. I want to make sure that you finish your two. She will go throughout the town and hold. I don't even know what the hell you would call that, but I guess like a town meeting for anybody that needs healing. And until like if you're sick, if you have like an injury, yeah. Like maybe Mary can help her, but Mary will help you then. She will essentially extend her magic to its all its uses for that day to help anybody like that. Make me a, you're using your magic, so make me a spell attack roll at advantage. Oh, that's advantage. No, 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 not spell, let's do wisdom. A wisdom check with it as advantage. Check? Okay. Yeah, check. So Mary will help you on this one. Marigard, Marigard health fair, that's cute. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> Brush your teeth, you have uh. free floss. That one's only <laughs> that one's only a fifteen. Fifteen? That's a success. You need one more. Okay. Hmm. Well, I mean, these are ways she would think of, so that's why I'm like, hmm. Man, I don't know. Those are good things. How are you going to be nice to a community? I know, those were good Teach things. Teach him to fight? Mmm. Mm. You have Rolly there with you. That's true. But I also don't need to kill them. <laughs> <laughs> have Rolly go on community theater. <laughs> <laughs> community theater. Uh, good question. Taylor, Taylor. Part of Taylor's thing is harvest, though. Do you want to help with the harvest? Yeah, so maybe she'll do that. Your sister will help you with this. Okay. Um, make me an athletics check again. Advantage or no advantage? With advantage. Actually, you know what? Uthiel's going to help you with this. Oh, okay. Aww. He's going to find some excuse to work with you. You said athletics? Yeah. With those that wasn't a good look. Cause I didn't like that dice. That one's only a fourteen. <laughs> he's a he, he, yeah, he's still. I think it, it's fine. <laughs> As you complete these these tasks to help out the community, um, to reconnect with your god, to symbolize what the sun does for everyone, as it sort of binds the community, it shines upon everyone, regardless of where you are. You get a boon. Your wisdom score goes up by one. <laughs> so if a seven of seventeen, you have an eighteen. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, now we're gonna shift over to Roly. Uh, I'm assuming you asked Moscow during this whole chaotic mess <laughs> uh, what the potion is and how you how you use it. But I first would like to interject with the what the shit. <laughs> I 100% agree with you. I was not. I was. I said I was coming here to visit. I didn't think it was going to be. This. It, yeah. That that's beer for you. Shit. Low key, I feel sorry for Uthiel. <laughs> don't don't tell her I said that. I mean, would really hate to get on her bad side. Like, oh, no, I agree with that. No, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, don't piss that one off. Yeah, I mean, think about, like, I, you know, Uthiel's a fine, upstanding man and all, but he ain't perfect. Eventually, he'll do or say something that'll, I don't know, get on her bad side. And, uh, I don't want to, uh, oh, God, I just shudder at the thought. Ugh. So, what brings you down here? Oh, um, favor. Sure, pull out the, you need? I pull out the vial. Uh, how, how do I use this? <laughs> I uh, oh goodness me! I yeah, kind of forgot to touch you, base on that. Yeah, you are, you are one of a kind, Rolly. Oh, I thank you. 
You're welcome. <laughs> um, simply enough, go to the infected spot. I think we all agreed it was in the swamps, yeah? Mm-hmm. Drop it in there. Open it up. Mm. Port. Gotcha. Alrighty. Is there anything else I should do or be concerned with? Or maybe, uh... I, I mean, I know there's a big spot, but I don't know if there's, like, little spots. Will this be enough? Yeah, just pour it into the spot. Whether that's the edge or the middle. Any place. So long as it's dropping into the infected water or pond or where... Listen, you've gone there. I don't know what's in there. Yeah, you don't want what's in there. I'd rather not. Probably for the best. All right. Uh, your 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 task should not be looking at muddled water. It should be making spicy water. Hey, uh, I can't wait till I'm done with this. Well, you know what, Ellie and, and Luna has everything under control. I think I'm going to spend some time down here for a bit, and then I'll head back up. I think you should. You know, you you lost your chance. That chance was taken from you, and you got it back. I don't know how. I don't know. I don't know how. <laughs> but but uh. Your yeah, guess I is mean, as good as mine, and uh, yeah. But you you should roll with it. I should roll with it. I like that. Mm -hmm. So uh, to speed this up, uh, really, you can definitely. As part of sort of visiting uh, your family as well as sort of learning about this, you head to the swamplands, fast forwarding back. You pop open elixir, pour it in. This white, ethereal, almost liquid gas, over, ever changing, starts to hit uh, the swamp water, and immediately you start to see it go. Spread outwards, a lot of like this collected black ichor starts to almost encapsulate it as it starts to in, like just go further into uh, the swamps. You were told that it may take a few days instead of a few years, so you get a sense the longer it's le allowed to do its thing, it'll start collecting and dispersing the infectious uh, spores. Uh, I'm gonna go back home, get my stuff. On the way home, I'm gonna go stop by the mayor's office. All right. Uh, head to the mayor's office. She's actually available this time. Who would have thought? <laughs> Who would have thought? Oh, my. Oh, wow. Look at that. Uh, oh, uh, to protect and serve, I guess. <laughs> Let me see here. Goodness. I can find it. There you are. Mayor uh, Elise Belladonna. Uh, you see uh, the half-elven form of her um standing about five foot six black hair that reaches down to a lighter discoloration um she has uh these like bright yellow eyes and the of course like the very fine form of like an elven face uh except less exaggerated um she's currently speaking to uh, the receptionist as you walk in mr bonewell miss belladonna I have been getting reports about you. And I am shocked to actually see you. I've been very busy. Available for once. Thank you. Come to my office. Come to my office. Oh, okay. oh, we're doing it. All right. <laughs> Gets you into the office. And of course, we're going to fast forward this part, but what would you like to say to her and what would you are, what are you trying to get from this? Uh, long story short, I wanted to cordon off the swamp area. Let's lock it down. No one's allowed in or out. The purpose for this is because I've... I I've gone through great lengths to find the solution to the Ebon Scourge, this Black Plague, and I think I found a way to get rid of it once and for all. I've already administered it, and it is doing its thing, but I need to leave it undisturbed for as long as possible. Now, instead of the effect, you know, instead of this disease, you know, going away within the next couple of years, it could be the next couple of days. Uh, just make a uh, persuasion check with advantage. Oh, 
Oh. Oh. Oh, yes. Yes. Yes, 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 yes. That's going to be a 23. Oh, shit. Oh, yes. Uh, there is no argument on her side. She definitely has reports and uh, documentation saying that you've been working together with Helga, uh, the maiden leader, who she trusts your word, uh, Helga, and as such, so does Belladonna. Uh, she gives you the confirmation that she'll keep everything locked away uh, for as long as they can. Um, definitely meat and, and you know substance does come from the swamp it does provide but she agrees that if it's gonna go away forever that she'll keep it locked so I'll tell her I must be on my way got other stuff to do I'll come back and check on it later perfect 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 I'll give you update uh, so Roly what would you like to go next training with Hannah or going back to Varsal uh, I definitely would like to uh, finish my training, this training that I've been sitting on for a while. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, heading back to Cleden City once again, next to uh, the sort of dust dirt like city next to the large Evergrey Lake. Um, the giant protruding rock formation where the bell is uh, that sort of overlooks the entire city where you do see the Colosseum, the Eclipse Colosseum, uh, where you spent most of your time training. Um, you head back uh, to the uh, the champ seat right behind it where you do know where Hannah your old mentor half-orc uh, mentor lives uh, you start to make your way around uh, towards this alleyway and you already hear poof, poof. all right again poof, poof. you finally creep around and you see uh, two familiar faces uh, Rita and Harvey who are currently training with Hannah uh, been a while, again. He, he, you see Harvey stop. What the? F Get in here, man! And then, as he starts to like encourage you to come in, you hear Hannah from the back. Oh. Oh, okay. Finally, decided to drag your ass back, huh? I missed you too. Get me a drink, then we'll talk. It's in the fridge. Not the fridge, but it's, you know, cold box. No, no complaints. I could totally use one. I didn't say get one for yourself. I wasn't asking. You see, as you pass by her, a bit of, like, smile, like, all right, then. Uh, she continues the training with uh, Reed and Harvey, just, like, almost like, all right, you're done. God, fuck, you need work. Roley! Yeah. My drink! Bring it. Ooh. Ooh. <sighs> might uh, might be a little bit empty, but I think we're we're good with that. Sure. Hmm. What brings you back? Um, good news. And I start to tell her a little bit about some of the stuff that's happened. Um, I tell her about you know the perilous adventures I've had recently. Mm-hmm. And then finally, like, but more of the reason why I came here, um, we have unfinished business. That we do. Well, uh, I think now is a good time. Uh, new bees, new blood. You know, like just the most passive aggressive, you know how Hannah is personally. And you see Rita and Harvey look at each other like, do we? Yes! Now! Uh, you spend time with Rita, Harvey, and Hannah for the next two days, because all you needed, right? Mm -hmm. You just needed two days, uh, as they essentially attack you at all hours of the day. Whenever instructed by Hannah, you're drinking something, they slap it out of your hands, they're like, she told me to, I'm sorry, we have to attack, and you just start going at it, uh, continuing your training. Even late at night, like, Rita sneaks up behind you and, like, slaps your face awake i'm sorry she told me to and they start going there is no rest uh, uh I, I actually tell them like uh, the very first time she apologizes i'd like to say like hey maybe don't apologize because i'm pretty sure that whatever's out whatever out there does that is probably not gonna apologize it's all come right. at me like you intend to die <laughs> 
<laughs> the whole thing. Um, so, Roly, uh, we've been talking off screen, and uh, we've been doing something wrong. Uh, after we've now recognized that you are wielding a two handed weapon, you were unable to wield also a shield. I made a so, boo boo. There is going to be an option for you. For completing your training, Han is going to give you another gift. Now, this gift is going to have one of two abilities, and you're going to choose. Either A, it will allow you to wield a shield while carrying your two-handed weapon. Or B, uh, while raging, uh, any creatures within five feet of you benefit from the stance of the mountain subclass feature. Ooh. Ooh, that's tough. You did this to yourself. <laughs> that, that I did. That, that I did. That I did. Um, for those who don't know, uh, for players, that means uh, if you're within five feet of Roly, you are immune to being prone. Oh. I'm never five feet away from Roly, though. Which is, yeah, you are never five feet away. <laughs> so that's away from... no benefit to me. Go ahead, Roly. <laughs> yeah, I, I think uh, if we had another fighter in, in here, I probably would take that. But I think uh, I am meant to be the front line. Okay. And I need as much defense as possible, given the fact that I've already died. <laughs> well, uh, yeah. he, she will train you in the art of not only having a shield further up your forearm, making sure that it's strapped to the hilt, but also available where enough of your arm sticks out where you can hold a weapon uh, proficiently. Oh, sweet. So you may keep all your stats in terms of uh, AC, uh, as well as using your two-handed great axe. Uh, you have now been taught how to do so. Yay! Um, Yay! So yeah, let me see here. Um, there's even a point I'll say here as a uh, you're like you're teaching Rita like don't apologize. Uh, Hannah catches wind of this and goes, Rita, two laps around the outer city limits. <sighs> Fuck! She starts to run and just leaves. So, don't die. And make me proud and stop being a huge sack of shit. I'm not sure if you can do that last one, though. Well, number one, it's getting tougher. Uh -huh. I'll admit, I wasn't anticipating dying until, well, I died. And, uh, number two, oh, I'm gonna make you proud. I'm gonna make you proud. When I start winning those Coliseum matches, and people start asking me, how did I get this good? They will know your name. I better. I heard that the Lunar Coliseum's opening up, so that's a chance. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I got plans. And number three. Well, I don't know about number three. Good, it stays. All right, you're sleeping in here for the two nights you uh, you spend your nights uh, behind the champ seat. Uh, let's see here. I think we may not have time for all the downtime, so we'll end up having it for the next session, which is fine. Uh, moving to number two for you, Savannah, uh, you can either do something with money or Raven's Kiss. I'm going with the Raven's Kiss because based on new information, I kind of, I need to go to my team because my sister's missing. <laughs> all right. So uh, we're going to go to the Raven's Kiss first, though. Perfect. You head to the Raven's Kiss, uh, going back to Akoda, where uh, you do see Leon, who's currently drinking in the corner, uh, reading a book, and as you start to walk in, sort of motions you to go downstairs to the Raven's uh, Kiss. I just walk straight there. Perfect. Uh, he, as you start to walk down this spiral staircase he actually goes into his his uh his jacket and hits you with a book not hard but like here you go 
Um, and it does say uh, darkness and fireflies. Yeah. Oh. Well, that's good. Did you know Sheba was missing? I mean, that's what your brother was saying. No what? one has seen her since, I guess, after I disappeared. Do you want us to look around? No, I uh, no, no, no. Her last mission was in Arrowfield. We've already kind of discussed what's going on there right oh, now. Yeah. All right. Uh... I, I I'm gonna have to get back to Vera and Roly eventually, but uh, this was supposed to be at my time off. Let's let's settle a few things, and then you can go on about your business. All right. <sighs> She's probably fine. That's so convincing, Leon. Thank you. Okay, hold on. Let me try it again. She's fine. I have claws, you know. So the book... So the book... Uh, you open it up, take some time with it. Apparently, uh, what it tells you is the story of uh, the creation of Mosted. And it's more of a very, like, mythological tale where it says that a tear in the sky during the night sky uh, brought upon uh, numerous rocks uh, and balls of, of, like, stone and mountain that fall and hit the ground, shaping the, uh, the continent to what it is today. Um, let me see here. Uh, rocks and ice onto the planet. Created the town, uh, created the uh, constant of Mosted, and as the final thing that the first civilizations would see as they look up into this tear uh, is one gigantic eye that looks upon the creation and, with, and is pleased with the evolution and uh, creation of life. You know, like almost like it's pleased with its own work. And eye and sky pleased with work. Why do I feel like we've heard that before? Or mentioned something like that before? No? Or just me? I have to go back and look. Yeah, I gotta go back to my- I don't think so, but <laughs> maybe. Maybe I dropped something. I don't know. I don't think so. Uh, but he brings you down. He goes, by the way, uh, first let's have a drink. Sure. Simply because I want to catch up. Sorry, sir. My mind's been busy, but yes, you deserve some time and a drink. And actually, I need to ask Richard a random question. No, 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 no. Give him time to stew. Okay, fine. Go ahead. Uh, he basically just takes you to the side to drink. Um, it's not until after a few, like, small talk that he goes, he kind of, like, starts to ke uh, fess up after having some alcohol in him. Um, okay. So, I've actually been asked by Richard to bring you in the moment you walk through our doors, but I've been arguing with him because he's an old bird and he can wait a little bit. Um, okay. <laughs> but he wants your opinion. Let's go. What? Oh, okay, fine. Okay. I just... <laughs> <laughs> he brings you down to the raven's uh, claw uh, within the portal room behind the bar. Uh, you end up at uh, the centralized space where all of the portals to the different sections of the raven's kiss are. Uh, and there is a fourth arch being constructed. Uh, Richard looks to you. Uh, the moment you walk in, Savannah, welcome back. Hug him. Mm. <laughs> this is new. It is. We are expanding. And we've had some arguments where we should place the next... The next headquarters. And, being an agent, I figured we wanted your opinion. Actually, it's funny you've mentioned that. So... We've come up to some land, and we are, oh, I, mean, I guess, we are starting our own business as a bar. I had the thought, but I wasn't sure of what was our capabilities, but 
would you like to expand to that location? Depends. We, we have a few locations in mind. Uh, we were either thinking uh, Uldale in the kingdom, Cleden City, uh, or we can instruct one up in Trand in the domain. And this one kind of looks towards uh, Leon, who's like, yes. And he's like, this one wants to build a, a headquarters in Yellow Sand on the Inneberry Island. Random. How are we going to jail a tunnel through water? All I know is that I want to go to an island. I haven't been there in a while. But then go to an island. But it's expensive. I could just go there. Okay, and we'll deal with you in islands later. Um, how about Arrak? It's Arrak, right? Alrak. I, I, I can't get it out of my mouth. Alrak. Alrak. How about Alrak? You definitely see like the feathers of Richard kind of flurl up and look towards you, and it's like, it's a bit risky to open up in a capital unless we have someplace very secure. We are looking at a couple locations, but if we could make it very secure, it, would you be interested in? Very much so. The person that would be our co-owner, he's extremely capable. We, I trust him with my life. He's proven to, I can trust him with my life. And how much you want to develop this is on your discretion. Make me a persuasion check. From here. I don't know if that makes me feel better or worse. That's going to be an 18. You are very high in terms of authority here within the Raven's Kiss. So your word is trusted. Now, what they start to devolve to you, like divulge uh, to you, is that it is very expensive to create this portal and of course they will cover the cost. Not only that, they will ensure that wherever you build it is has enough funds to make sure that it is solid, clean, and no one suspects anything. That's the whole point. You basically secured yourself some funding to assist you building your bar. So when it comes to like, I want to have, you know, new tables and chairs, they will cover some of that cost. Good job, Savannah. <laughs> High places, or low places, I should say. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, essentially, when you are done with your bar, which we'll do after this, uh, they will build a portal to the Raven's Kiss. That was easier than I thought it was going to be. I honestly did not expect you to go, let's have a Raven's Kiss thing here. I was not expecting that. This is when me I as, realized. <laughs> as a DM to the players and the audience, I thought they were just going to pick one of the things I chose here. No. <laughs> They made it better. Well, she said, let's build a bar. I'm all like, hey, we br run out of basements of bars. Why not? Fuck, I forgot about that. It's great. It's great. No, it's great. I love it. Uh, by the way, uh, Roll, your box starts to glow. <laughs> oh, no. I imagine it's the middle of the night at this point. Like, ugh. Oh, this thing again. Oh, God. What do you want? Uh, you hear, Tabaxi Rogue, let's go! <laughs> Uh, shut up! What a freak! Oh, <laughs> Screw you too. <laughs> Go back to sleep. Uh... After you, Savannah? I think we need to tell Gina Lee to put a screening device on that box. Like... <laughs> do I or do I need to open it? Uh, back to you, Vera. Oh, crap. Okay. You have finished your training. You've done your divine intervention and got Moscow and Mary and Uthiel back. Yes. Uh, I was a busy you girl. Did, you didn't write 
you've kind of combined a few things. So you are now free to do what you wish in this third one. Uh, what would you like to do? She's gonna you have, have certainly a lot of stuff. She's gonna have that awkward conversation with Uthiel. Okay. Oh wait, do you want to call everyone up to do the yeah. ceremony? The, but she's gonna have this. How she's much gonna. More awful can get. She's gonna have this conversation. Oh no, the GM didn't even know this was my character's thing. Fucking what? <laughs> Until <laughs> I had to tell him, and then so. Before all that, before she calls everybody up to get hitched and all that, she's gonna have a conversation with him alone. Sure, sure, sure. Because the whole tribe's been following her around. <laughs> yeah. Your sister has while. been like looking at you. Like ten feet away, like, like peering around a corner and like <laughs> watching, and then you catch eyes with her, and she's like, <laughs> outside. You know what? She's gonna take him outside to the treehouse because he's been to the treehouse. It's, it's probably a little better. Hopefully, if Foson actually fucking took care of it. There's still that naked picture of a drow. <laughs> you thought I forgot. I don't know. I'm assuming that he already knows how he's, her brother is. Yeah, so he's it's like, just like he kind of gives that uh, that half-hearted chuckle, like. <laughs> <sighs> and he sits down at the entrance, feet outwards, and lets you sit down next to him. I forget how we kind of don't fit in here. It's fine. It's it's not. This is weird. <laughs> I strive towards this for months and it's weird. How do you feel? I definitely feel out of the loop. Um, so many things have changed. A lot. Yeah. How's the troop? They're okay. Um, Willie kind of abandoned them on deployment. But... Well, let me get to my point. <laughs> Before we dive into all that, because there's a ton of conversation to be had. When we first met, did you think that was like a happy accident? Like, just, you know, just chance. I, I kind of thought it was a happy accident. I'm very grateful. Yeah. Every day. When I met you, Uthiel, I didn't... I don't know. I don't have words for it. I didn't have, I guess, a journey I was on. All I knew, I was going to be a, a student of Paylor. That's all I knew. I knew I didn't want to be behind the, you know, the counter at the Seasons Bounty. I knew I wanted to go out and do something more than everybody else had done in my family. But when I met you, I thought being you and how you are, I thought Paylor had put you in my path for something else. I thought he wanted you to be his champion. I thought he wanted you to be this, his knight. He kind of stops you at that moment and he's like, Vera, I'm not special. I'm not doing anything, treating people any different than they should be. Everyone deserves kindness. And yeah, they're bad actors. And to keep the community safe, sometimes you need to stop those. But I'm not a champion. I'm not... I, I, I'm, I'm reluctant to agree that maybe Paylor put me in your path because he's the one and you're the one who brought me back getting, it's it's hard to argue with that i'm getting to that i didn't think i was gonna fall in love with you 
I thought I was supposed to be this messenger or something and then that happened and I totally I don't want to say forgot but I put it you know back there and the things you don't think about and you dust off every once in a while but when you left or were gone I didn't understand why I once said I was going to cry, but I'm probably going to cry. <laughs> um, if you were meant to be my gift. But it took me a long, a long time to understand what he was trying to do. Uthiel, <sighs> Kane, you're not the champion. I am. <laughs> but... Not a doubt in my mind. I'm gonna ask you if you would serve as one of his knights, so, if, if you're willing. I will not make you, I will not make that choice, I will not argue with you if you say no. So Amber, yes, we talked about something. Yes, we did. <laughs> about this particular scenario. As you Stop start, crying. start uh, to bring I'm gonna make Tumble cry, this is how this works. Your consciousness goes black. Uh oh. We didn't talk about that. Okay. <laughs> Your conscious note goes black, and you are now a passenger in your body. As the light of Palor takes over, you, Amber, as a player, I need you to act as a <laughs> act as a vessel okay. right now for Palor directly, as Palor is going to ask Uthiel to be. One of his flock. How you as a god right now <laughs> will ask this man. I don't wanna. <laughs> I told you to come with a pitch, and I, I didn't say, you were like, I'm gonna pitch it as me. I'm like, no. <laughs> you need to ask this man to dedicate. Well, now I'm terrified. <laughs> um. <laughs> For the god, I wanna hear this. <laughs> It's probably gonna freak him out! He's gonna see his Good. wife's <laughs> eyes glow and then just turn into this dude's voice. Okay. <laughs> it's through your voice. Oh, okay. But it is Palor through you. <laughs> hope not. I hope that's not what you No, that's so <laughs> Palor's weird. Never mind, I say no. Because I painted him to be this perfect person. Okay. She was ask in his full name. He does not have no middle name because we didn't flush that out. But Uthio Kane, son of light, son of balance, full of love and kindness that knows no bounds. <sighs> there would be no better light and no better soldier to aid Vera in her journey of restoring balance to this plane. Will you join her? Vera, you see this because you are a back passenger as this- As creepy as, as this is. voice takes over and speaks for you, almost asking Uthiel for his patronage. You see Uthiel almost taken aback, <laughs> and then after hearing the words, reaches out for your hand, and you are almost like now split, half there, half not. He looks you in the eye and says, if you have me, I will. And the light escapes your body, transfers over to him, now I can tell you what he is. I did good. <laughs> He's not a paladin, as you were hoping for. No, I know. I said Amber would see that for him. But he we'll is a celestial warlock. Oh, okay. <laughs> Palor is now his patron, and he will do its bidding, his bidding. He is both a fighter and a warlock. 
He gonna fuck shit up. <laughs> Sounds like it. <laughs> Good, we need it. Light <clears throat> releases from your body going through his own. And not only that, he is no longer a rune fighter. Now, I'm gonna find the direct name for it, because there is actually a particular name for this fighter. He is considered a... Da, 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 da. There you are. Uh, hopefully I don't mispronounce this. Banneret. He is a banneret fighter. I think we went over that, but I forget what that does. Essentially, he can give you his party the second wind. Oh, cool. He is a support fighter. Not only that, he is also a celestial warlock, so he has also healing magic. It's fitting. Ah, so what you're saying is we have a healer. I mean, we already had a healer, but... So what you're saying is we have a healer. <laughs> but the You're not gonna be real sparing with those diamonds. Light escapes. Oh no! And you see him almost get a waft of this energy. And a small light escapes his palm. And a small spinning sun. And you finally are conscious and you're back to your body. You're fully autonom autonomous. I didn't know I could do that. That was weird. <laughs> Immediately grabs your hand. You're like, are you right? Yeah, I'm fine. He surprises me a lot more nowadays. So thematically, he's... Through you is the patron. You're his patron. <laughs> as a vessel for for Paylor. Okay. I did not know that was going to happen, but I don't see it any less fitting. <sighs> and she proceeds to word vomit everything that has happened with Lily, the rock, the whole bit. Oh, shit. <laughs> yeah, she's not going to say everything, so she's going to tell him Maybe we should totally wait for that till we get into the tower. Yeah, eh, it's okay. She's just saying. She's gonna tell him all that. You know, scrying all that. I know. Well, Last time she checked in with her god, he was she was a little occupied instead of watching Vera. Uh, as you word vomit, <laughs> select keywords, yeah. and keeping something secret and not revealing too much. But I assume that you do tell him that. Here he knows that Lily is batshit insane. Yeah. Uh, so he definitely is concerned for your loved ones and, well, our loved ones. Your mom? You are way more than a mean. bookworm. <laughs> you are a champion. You know, when I started this, that's not what I wanted, and then, I don't know. As much as I want to stay here and get married and live in this nice little house, I just don't think it's for me. I think I'm supposed to right when the I, wrong, so to speak. When we were first, in the beginning of our relationship, I would go out and serve my kingdom, protecting those that I can. I think it's your turn. Protect, care, and ensure what you can is preserved. I'm capable. I'll keep our loved ones safe. I know you will. Which I also need you to do me a favor. Sure. What happened to you needs to be exposed. 
because nobody believes us right now with the rank she is, and I don't know who I can trust, but I've watched my friend die twice. And I've watched you do it twice. And so help me, if she does it again, I will enter in a second of her life. Sorry, so like grab your hand, like to calm you down. Like I get it, I do. Point is, we need help, and I think we've been banging our heads against the wall long enough. So you, Uthiel Kane, will be my knight in shining armor while I'm away. To protect and serve all around us. But first, we're getting hitched, goddammit, because I swear to God, <laughs> I'm tired of calling you my fiance. <laughs> so, we're gonna roleplay one last thing. Uh, obviously, Rolly and Savannah, you guys have some money making opportunities. We'll say that you go through, the, go through those in this time frame kind of thing. Um, but by next session, which will, again, for those who are watching, will happen on the 11th, um, that's when we'll actually execute them. So to finish this up. I also have off, a date. And that too. Uh, and we'll definitely say that you bring Gina Lee to this wedding. <laughs> that's the date. Fancy. Damn. She wa no, right. she, wa she wants to, oh, maybe this is the date. Hey. Hey man, then you have like a real alone date, but yeah, that's just like a fancy pre-date. <laughs> I'm like, that's one hell of a way. I'm like, she's your wedding date. Okay. Uh, so, the way it's gonna work is, uh, Savannah, you get a call. Rolly, you get a call. Oh, the troops get a call too. Oh, the troops get a call. They can't leave. No, I know. But they do But get they're a call. super excited. You definitely- Can I use this call to tell Vera about, um, Sheba? Of course. Yeah. Now you so can find out that information. And we'll definitely say you guys meet up back at Marygar. Because again, the way we do yeah. uh, downtime, it's you can go wherever you need. For once. <laughs> For once. <laughs> For once we get to go somewhere without uh, getting hit But over yes, you, you can definitely discuss this as you start to mention that Shiva's been missing for a while. But... Uh, if you want to say anything, go say it. Sorry. No, I, I don't think it surprises Vera. She's just like tallying it up in her head to go the best way about it. But she'll probably just hug Savannah. Well, I mean, we'll talk when we meet in person. <laughs> intervention. I also could take and tell you? Moscow about his now silent business partner. <laughs> I'm sorry, what? <laughs> You're not listening. Go away. <laughs> You need to be dressed up. <laughs> Please. <laughs> I always look good. Mm -hmm. uh, definitely, Uthiel was like, so. Fire Genasi. Yeah, who would have thought that's why you're always warm? That's a stretch. Flaming hair. <laughs> Don't give me that look, Rolly. <laughs> Am I new terms for hot blooded? Oh, great! Everyone has jokes. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Your kids are gonna look very interesting. Oh my god! I can't wait to see that. Kids. Flaming RGB. I mean, I <laughs> plan to go kick some ass and then come home and yes, have children. It would feel. I already forewarned my dad. Yeah. He hasn't really... I totally forgot about my mama! Hold on. Oh. <laughs> I don't know if you want to tell her in her state. She's not showing. No. But Vera's just gonna give her a hug and be like, I hope it's a girl. And then she just hugs her. She like, hugs you and then looks over to Cyrus and <laughs> I didn't tell anybody else. <laughs> 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 
But, uh, tell you what, since we're almost, I don't think 10 minutes or 6 minutes will be do you justice for a wedding. <laughs> so, I'll build that up. Okay. Uh, we'll this, work together, but, This uh, is just getting ready. You guys, so next session, uh, obviously we're gonna have the one shot happening next Saturday and the following Saturday we'll pick this up. Next session, before we begin with the wedding, we will begin with Savannah and Rolly's money-making opportunities, so you can have some money in your pockets. I, I like money. And then, uh, Rolly, you can also have your date. If you want to have a separate one, you can do that too. Or you can bring Gina Lee to the wedding, and then we'll have a wedding. I like money. <laughs> I like this. No fights. A little break. A little break. A little break. All right, everyone, thank you so much for joining us today. This was sort of a, a light downtime stream. I'm really happy that our players were able to get through a few things here. Uh, we'll be back next Saturday with a one-shot. The continuation of the story will happen on the 11th, so we'll see you guys then. And also, we get to introduce you guys to uh, a Finnish tavern. Yes. A lot of cool you're gonna stuff. Have a lot of, you're going to be very busy. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Later, guys. Bye. Bye.